apparently we're talking about women over the age of 30. Yes. We're supposed to be talking about video games. <laughs> oh, Kyle shit. Kyle McLaughlin's the mayor on Portlandia. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> See, when... when the, and his this... assistant's the actual mayor of Portland. <laughs> See, when we started the show, you know, four-player podcast, I thought this meant, you know, player as in with the ladies. No. What? You know, oh. Mm-hmm. oh, four Maybe? players. Four pickup artists. No, podcast. I don't. Th- I don't. Because <laughs> this is how this podcast has started out. Clearly, yes. No, no, we're not doing that. Anyways, what are we doing? We're, we're talking about video What's games. That's what we're actually here to talk about, and we have we have some pretty big games to talk about this week. Oh, by the way, my name is Nick Henderson. <laughs> Brad Simons, hello, is here. Christopher Guthridge, hello, and filling in the fourth chair this week, Chris Davis, usually behind the camera, but he's out here today talking about video games. Good evening, everyone. And uh, Nolan is not with us tonight. He'll be back next week. Um, we, we killed him off in the last season. Will he? Is this the last season? Well, no, no, we no killed he him means off last the previous season. season. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. There was a pretty strong fan reaction, but you know, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna stick with our artistic vision. Fantastic. I like that. Okay. Um. So we have what are we talking about? We're, we're gonna talk about some Metal Gear, <laughs> some infamous Second Son. Uh, Chris Davis played that Bioshock 2 DLC or Bioshock Infinite DLC, not Bioshock 2. Although you should definitely play the DLC for Bioshock 2 if you haven't oh, I, already. Oh, I love Minerva's Den. Fantastic. And um, a surprise game that Crispy played a little bit of we'll talk about at the end. <laughs> Which I may or may not have listed in the title. For and it may or may not have been Flappy Bird. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Which, Crispy played a lot of Flappy Bird this weekend. Oh my God. Which, Which, by the way, uh, an epic made ripoff of flappy bird comes it ships with ue4 really yeah it's built on ue4 what's it called flappy bird uh meat like bird that. meat, <laughs> meat <laughs> bird it has a wall that explodes how, how can you hear the words meat bird and not think penis <laughs> <laughs> what well i didn't think meat that. Bird. it just sounds like there's there's never been a more perfect euphemism for a penis, other for a than penis, right? meat bird. Meat bird. <laughs> meat bird. I didn't think I had to say this, but I definitely don't want to see your dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm broken. Okay. 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 Jeez. Let's let's focus for a second, guys. Let's try our best. I want to talk about Metal Gear Ground Zeroes because we talked about that last week. Now we've all... Chris, you played it, right? I did. Okay. Well, I did one playthrough. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So we've all... At this point, we've all played it. Some of us a little bit more than others. Um, I'm I'm, I'm <laughs> curious to see... I'm going to stop looking at chat. Um, Chris, you played... Well, Brad, you, you both of you have played all of the side missions? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. Okay. So I haven't touched any of the side missions. We talked a little bit about it last week, and we had... Um, Pretty positive things to say. I noticed maybe we, we barely talked about it last week, right? Yeah, no, I kind of, I kind of just ran through my brief experience with it, but we didn't really get into. Well, it. speaking of Super brief experience, I mean, it's underwear. Pretty, it's pretty brief. <laughs> it's it's like, kind of a short game. So, so like, what do we talk about? I mean, the controversy is that there's not much there, and there really isn't. No, you know, but you know, and but, the conversation is like, is it worth the money? Uh, probably not. Who cares? That. The thing is, if you have to ask yourself that question, you probably don't care enough about Metal Gear, in which case my answer would probably be just wait till it drops in price, because this thing will drop in price. You're or, just yeah. not or a just... true Metal Gear fan. No, that's, that's not what I'm saying at all. <laughs> no, I know. But like, I'm saying literally, <laughs> it, it if you don't already like... have it, you it's probably right. not worth the money. If, you, if you're considering whether or not you want yes. to spend the money, then you probably don't care enough about Metal Gear 5. To... No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, I'm not saying that either. <laughs> I'm saying if you don't already have it or, or if, if you're considering the cost, it's not that you don't like Metal Gear enough. It's just that it probably isn't worth it to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like there's people out there with like tons of disposable income. Or I mean, whatever. yeah, this isn't like you're not. There's not a lot It's a here. fun game. And if you really want to play it, it's definitely worth checking out. But you're not missing anything, I would say. Well, I, I, I think it's definitely something you should probably play before the final before metal gear solid 5 proper right. comes out but right. you don't have the, to pick it up right now this is the kind of thing especially the disc is this thing's gonna drop in price like a rock yeah oh yeah especially because oh, yeah. i don't think this thing's gonna sell that well i bet if we went to a gamestop today there'd be like five or six copies for each system. i mean i mean i walked into a gamestop to pick up dark souls or whatever mm-hmm. and and they and and they were like you want to pre-order something or 
Or I was like, sure, I'll pre-order Metal Gear or something. It's like, you know this is a de like a demo, right? Kind of like a demo thing. So, like, if you have retail warning people, I don't think this thing is going to do that well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you for, but, for what it is, though, size-wise. I mean, you know, I barreled through the single player. and I probably took a little longer than most people. I know you finished it in, like, an hour? Uh, about 54 minutes. I, think 54, I see. Really? I spent damn near three hours on it just because I was... Yeah, mine was, yeah like, me too. Mine was like two and a half. Dude, I, no, was, I, was, I, was, like I was going back and forth trying to save all those prisoners. I was just running around kind of I mean, seeing I, where I, I could go, too. what I could do. I mean, I think my final clock time was like two hours and 36 minutes or something like that. Wow. Yeah. yeah I mean, there, 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 is, there is plenty of room there to stretch your legs and experiment and have fun. Well, that, yeah, before. And, and that's the first thing I wanted to do when I started playing. I, can, I wasn't like, okay, I got this game. I'm going to fucking beat it. You know, that's definitely yeah. not what I... What I was, I was very aware of the fact that if I say, if I move too quickly, it's going to be over before it begins. Exactly, exactly. Us knowing that, I think, kind of changed our experience. I really, really did. Even after I heard all this stuff, I thought there was going to be more to the main mission. I was like, it is literally just like, like a single objective. It it is get and these it's, two people. It's a surprisingly small map for what it is. I also thought the map was going to be a lot bigger. I thought that, you know, the, the mission would end, we get a cutscene, then we go to the next mission, and then it ends. Yeah. Hey, what but was no. that, um... So remember back when they first announced Ground Zeroes and they were trying to explain what it was, they had, some, they had said something about you can call on a helicopter and it would play, mm -hmm. like, the Ride of the Valkyries yeah, or whatever? Yeah, you can set it to do that. You can still have it do yeah, that? Yeah, that's all in the iDroid too. device. Oh, okay. Like, if you go over to, like, his music selection, there's, like, your active tracks that you can play listening to while you're playing the game. And you can also set tracks for the helicopter as well. Yeah. And they also had the option where you could you could import your own music as well, too, which was kind of cool. But, I mean, well, it, I don't think anyone's really going to be... Well, I mean, there, there might be a few people, but I don't that. think that actually works on the PS4 version. Because it doesn't oh, it really? does support DLNA. Really? Yeah, the, the, that's this is... This... This game, whatever it is, there's not a lot. Like, like when people say, "Oh, well, I spent hours just fucking around," that doesn't take away from the fact that there's not a lot. Like, you have to, and I know there's a lot of shit to collect, but you have to really want to collect that stuff. And I yeah. know they unlocks things, but even the side missions are still in that same camp. Yeah, it all that changes really is the time of day. Mm -hmm. and, and the side missions get pretty fucking kooky. Like, like, especially the the. How many are there? First of all, there are five so, side missions, and then you got the extra ops, which but is I the mean, pre order thing. I mean, they're they're just they're shorter than even the main thing. Is, isn't there one where you have to like rescue? You wait, wait, uh, stop! That's a spoiler. Is it? Yes. Oh, I, didn't, I thought that was. It gets kooky. Yeah. It, especially the deja vu mission that you unlock if, after you collect all the patches that looks in the main so story. Boring. Honestly. Wait, what does? It's 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 like so bizarre. Wait wait wait. What what is boring and bizarre? I missed something. Well, the, I don't know what he's talking about. Well, the, well, I'm saying I've I've seen footage of the Deja Vu. It looks very boring. But is I mean, oh, is Deja is that Vu the one the, that's like the the first mission or the Metal Gear Solid, the original Metal Gear Solid yeah. mission? Yeah. Mm. It, it it's basically just it thinks it's still in that camp, but. Well, I mean, everyone knows about this this mission kind of, so it's kind of spoilers. But it, it's just like this weird fever dream thing that where it's just it's basically just like east like Easter eggs everywhere. Yeah. But now now the actual point of the mission is to recreate moments from Metal Gear Solid One by like doing things that are kind of like Metal Gear. Basically, there are some Easter eggs that you have to find, essentially. To, to complete the mission. But then there's other Easter eggs like all over the place. Um, it's just weird, but it's also kind of cool and strange. I wouldn't say it's necessarily fun, but it's it's cool to do from like an Easter egg standpoint. Yeah. And and, and, and if you um and once you beat that mission, you unlock Metal Gear Solid One Snake. So he's like <laughs> the like pixel skin. Moment. Very very like few polygons when looking. he speaks his head well, bobs up like, and down yeah, yeah. And, and all the soldiers are like those the white, genome soldiers yeah the white bound like the white dress like snow the what, genome what, are you try, what are you trying to say uh <laughs> it's super weird it's strange but there's some clever easter eggs well, 
hidden within that mission but again you're still in that camp you're not doing much different from anything else yeah that you did i mean for me i I spent a lot of time just kind of playing with the controls and running back and forth, listening into guards, just kind of observing the world they built. Because the, even though it's a small world, like the, it's very tightly packed with like details and sort conversations. Yeah, you're, you're right, and that's why I was excited, just because to poke around in this like. You know, get, getting a sneak peek of what how Metal Gear Solid Five is gonna. Yeah, and play. it's a, it's basically a very small, thin vert, a vertical slice. Of, but it's of not even a, a vertical slice. Like this would could be. This is like a tiny little area. This, this, this. I don't even know how this is gonna fit into like an open world setting. But this could just. This was just like pretty much the size of like one of the larger areas of Metal Gear Solid Three, where you had like. Yeah, like a compound. It's or whatever. about yeah. the size of the uh, the play area that you have with the end, I think. Yeah, well, but I mean, this is like very specifically like there are environments in Metal Gear Solid Three that are very much like just like this, where it's like an enemy like compound. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, it's very reminiscent of that. But if anything, if if if, if this if this thing let me down. In a, in a way that I don't think Metal Gear Solid Five Phantom Pain is going to let me down. It's that like you're not in a very exciting location. No, and 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 it, you don't get to do any like like Metal Gear Solid is known for like crazy boss fights and stuff. Yeah, There's you're not nothing. getting any of that here. You're li it's just a it's, it's pretty grounded by Metal Gear standards. Well, except, I mean, as except far that as final like cutscene, but yeah, uh, that's not grounded. But at even all. that, it wasn't like. <laughs> doesn't doesn't begin to approach some of the like really crazy metal gear shit though. which is why i'm glad that at least the side missions remind us that metal gear solid is weird and goofy yeah and that's a good uh, thing so those are yeah. worth playing though because i haven't touched them no, yet, but i think I you should intended. you should play those yeah they're, they're decent i mean they they will drop you into the the maps in a different position different time of day mm -hmm. so that changes the uh the ability of the guards to see you yeah, uh, so there's a bunch of different little things. I'm looking forward. I'm gonna play it again, and I'm gonna start playing those side missions for sure. Like one of the things that I was noticing that I was just having fun playing around with is just like the mobility of the character in this yeah. game is so well realized. Like how smooth it is when he goes from like prone position to mm -hmm. or crouching to like prone is so smooth, and it, it's like it's like previous Metal Gear Solid games. It worked fine, but there was this like really jarring like yeah. oh, kind of like transition between from one position to the next. Yeah, when, when you get big boss to start sprinting across the map, it really feels. Yeah. Natural. This thing plays like really well, really. Mm -hmm. nicely. It does. Um, what did y'all think of reflex mode? Is that something you're gonna play? I think it's going to be a very big crutch. I'm kind of worried about it. Uh, crutch, but it, it, you can't you, turn. You it can't off. turn it off. Yes. I, I personally am probably I I like that kind of thing, um, just because I like to feel like. If I get spotted, I have an option other than reloading. No, yeah. no. What, what I'm well, if you had the ability to save anywhere, which we don't know yet at this point, because I mean, this is just checkpoint based in. Uh, yeah, in it's good. It's Ground Zeroes, I'm, Imagine it's going to work differently in an open world. But no. I mean, think about Metal Gear Solid Three, which you could technically go guns a blazing. But if you didn't want to go guns a blazing, like, and you got spotted, you were like hiding for like five minutes. Yeah, and that was kind of dull. Yeah. you know, everyone talks about how long Metal Gear Solid Three is versus the others, and I honestly think it's because you spend so much time in that game Just waiting for way. guards Hiding to and... stop looking for you. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, I, think, I, I think the I think the reflex mode. I, I'm I'm half and half on it. Mm -hmm. I think it. I know they're not going to listen to this, but if they had the ability to where you could take take the reflex mode. And have it based on like a meter or adrenaline, mm -hmm. so you can only do it a certain amount of times within a certain amount of time, a uh, certain frame. Yeah. Uh, then I think it'd be a lot better. I, don't, uh, I mean, other games have, have done it like that for sure. But but I mean, I've run into like waves of like three or four guards, and I'll reflex one, and I keep going reflex another, and just all in the span of like 15, 20 seconds. Mm. Oh, yeah. it does it for each like consecutively each one like. Yeah, yeah. Guard, like, I feel like there's, guards don't spot you at once. I feel like yeah. there's there's yeah. some limits to it, especially because silencers really don't last that long. 
I mean, I mean that, it, that's if you're I mean, you using still, your lethal weapons. You still have like it, you still have to like hide the dude's body. Like even if you do kill one guard, if he, if he's if he's in an area where there's a lot of them patrolling, you still have to hide his body and make sure that nobody else finds him. So it's not. I don't think it's a complete like get out of jail free card. It definitely does make the stealth aspect of it a bit more streamlined and yeah. easy. Now, I feel do, like. Do you, but if, but it if you turn, do if everything you, for you. If you turn it off, do you think the game would become too frustrating? I think if you turn it off, it would feel like like Metal Gear Solid three or four. But but do you get enough feedback that that from like the guard? Well, here's the thing. That, I, that I feel little, like their like, vision's meter, a lot better. Well, they stuff. have that they have that new meter thing that like actually highlights on your reticle whenever a guard's like yeah. looking at you. I don't yeah. like the way that works though. Like it, it's kind of hard to tell. Maybe I had never learned how is, to read it correctly. But it is a more it is a more direct feedback on like how how a, well you're hiding. Yeah. There's no soliton right. And, and I do like how no. the AI at least so you, you you get partially seen once and they they you know flash your light at you and try to see if yeah, all this is really ignoring cool. you. But you get seen again within a certain amount of time frame. They'll go over to investigate where you were. Yeah. So, so I have a question for you guys. I had a really frustrating moment in this demo. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just called it a demo. I didn't mean to. Um, <laughs> That's appropriate. At That's the very, at the very when you're, I'm trying not to spoil anything, but there's one. You're, is is it towards the end? Yes. So that last kind of objective of the entire thing, yeah. where you're basically escorting a character, yes. right? Yeah. Um, well, not escorting so much as carrying. But yes. Yeah. Um, I got to a point where like, they they weren't very clear on what they wanted you to do. To me, it felt like I was supposed to try and get this person all the way back to the initial drop point which is what i ended up doing but i had a really hard time getting back there without being spotted like a really really hard time well, once i got in there i didn't really have an issue you could drop the helicopter you can you can yeah, yeah, yeah that they, they, want, they want so. to use that mechanic of of the smoke grenade to call in the helicopter and i think there's like three different points in how that does it base. not get shot down it can get yeah, like it, it gets attacked like while you're doing a so drop what are and you the pilot to do will about say that? like defend it. Yeah, no. First time I I played Dude. through the main mission, I I summoned the helicopter right yeah, in the main right. base. And there's like APCs and stuff firing at it and everything. I I had a lot. I had some I problems. Like, I, I felt like I was gonna be. Too. I felt like I was doing it wrong if I did it. That I had way. some problems with that part too. I I kept uh, I kept dying because I was summoning it like right there in the middle of that base. I ended up just having to like run away from everybody get to like one of the secluded areas on the outskirts of the base, wait for their awareness to die down, and then call in the helicopter. See, I ended up, I, my first instinct was to try and get her back across, get her across the base by putting her into a truck and driving that way, mm -hmm. thinking that maybe if you're in a truck, they won't immediately recognize that you're not, you know, a, another soldier driving a truck. And you can, I walked over, I came out of the door, I walk over to that one truck over there, I put her in the, the you have to go around, put her in the passenger seat first, then go around and get in the driver's seat, which was cool. And then I get in the driver's seat and I pull out and nobody says anything and I drive out the little, little exit um, door and then all of a sudden everyone was alerted and like just, just I get blown up in like five seconds. Well, there, there, there's two things that could have happened there. Number one, uh, so I think the AI, and this is me thinking, I think the AI, it doesn't react to you driving if they see you so long as you're you know obeying like the standard rules of the see, i wasn't I, I was trying so hard to be careful okay i didn't touch anything i didn't and drive fast but and number two they what know happens that she gets taken though, yeah think. well no that that's the thing so the ai it'll spawn in a couple guards after you uh rescue that character and they'll go investigate the cell and if they that character's not there, they sound the alarm. Oh, what you can do, though, is take you can stick around out. for a little bit longer and then take out those guards, and the alarm won't go off. Really? I love That's cool. the living, breathing. Like, I love... Like, like people kind of talk shit about the AI because it does weird things that aren't, like, very human-like. I mean, it, they, it has its quirks, but it's still like this... It's still like this really interesting thing that you can poke at and react to it, like it has a good it has a good sense of like cause and effect between what you do and how the game yeah. reacts yeah. to it. It, it it's very different from other games and that's what i really like about like I, ai in in these games i mean I, i've got a few issues with it number, number one i kind of miss the camo system for metal gear solid 3 well who's to say that's not or even four. i mean that i feel like i would this really seems just like it's going to be line of sight only 
you think? But are you basing that on what you played well, in Ground Zeroes, or are you they, Ground they Zeroes have, and on the market? They do have they some done. environmental like camouflaging mechanics. Like they even specifically you hide in like a bush. if you if you like hide in tall grass or things like that, that'll that'll decrease your visibility. Well, so if you're prone, so who's no, you, to you, say you are completely invisible when you go into a bush or tall grass? Well, it. who's to say that 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 that's not something that isn't going to be in Phantom Pain? Though, you know? I don't know. I, I kind of just wish. There was I, like, I, especially since it's open world, I feel like. They kind of have to have that reactive camo. And then another thing that kind of annoys me is going back to the way uh, 2 and 3 worked, and hell, even 4, if I remember correctly. Uh, you know, you'll get spied, you'll get sighted, and the guards will retreat. They'll call in backup. They don't do this anymore. As soon as uh, you get out of reflex money, if you haven't killed them, boom, the alarm goes off and everybody starts swarming in. Wait, what do you mean? But, I mean, what they'll do is that they've got a walkie-talkie on them, and if they see something that's suspicious, sometimes they'll call in to CP, the command control people, whatever, and they'll come and investigate. And if they don't get a response after a certain amount of time from you knocking them out or whatever, they'll send other guards to investigate. Well, they used yeah, to like do that, that, too. Yeah, they yeah. used to do stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, no, I'm saying they, they did that. that. They kept that at least. But uh, the initial alert status, you know, you immediately get cited. It goes back to the old Metal Gear Solid 1 rules. And I... Where, the, where like the, you don't actually see the guard go trigger the alarm, it just yeah, it just, it just it, goes off. It just goes off without having like because like you said, it, there's kind of a disconnect there. It's like there's that one moment where you can wait around for a guard to come and then you can take them out before they have a chance to trigger the alarm. But then in other moments you get spotted and then the moment you're spotted, the alert just goes off. Yeah, but I I, I it's still like an interesting set of systems that you can kind of like poke at and, and whatnot. And I also really like how. Uh, when you grab a guard, you can tell him to call someone who's nearby. That's cool. Oh, yeah. That's you really say call cool over, well. call him over. Or I also really like you know just giving get, have him give you information about a map too. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is cool. You know, see, I, I play this game and you know it's not much. There's not much there, but I imagine what this game is gonna be like in like a proper Metal Gear game, and these systems seem really cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What, I, I hate um, Kiefer Sutherland. As far as like you hate him, yeah, I think I think he's bad. I I, I, I think that that Solid Snake was kind of he was his character was over the top a little bit and kind of campy, and that was good. It really fit the series and, and, and like because you know the villains were also like over the top and crazy and weird. And yeah. Kiefer Sutherland, he sounds like he belongs in like a like a Call of Duty game. You know, he doesn't sound like he belongs in, like, this weird, you know, you know, metal, like, Kideo Kojima, well, you know, inspired by, like, weird Japanese anime, like, experience. He, he sounds like, you know, like a boring well, it's, and bored character. Well, I don't know, because it feels like the tone of the game in general has taken a little bit of a shift. Well, then that, that yeah, oh, that's yeah, terrible. It, it, it's that's going, a bad thing. I'm not willing to call that a bad thing until I've seen what the actual game looks I, like. But because, we've seen a lot of the actual game, and it seems pretty fucking crazy. We, we have, but, I mean, we, we don't know, again, we don't know all that much about some of the characters in the game. Not to mention, he didn't have a whole lot of lines. Yeah, he doesn't say much But you know what? He doesn't deliver one-liners with gusto. And you know what? David Hayter delivered one-liners with mm-hmm. fucking gusto. And there's a lot of good one-liners no, in, I mean, did you, in, in the Metal saying, Gear Solid series. Did you did you watch the the outro uh, where it, they they show like you know some Phantom Pain footage and it's Kiefer talking over it? Yeah, yeah. I I kind of like the way he did the character right then. I'm all I'm saying is it's, I'm not Tom willing. Clancy. I am not willing to write it off yet. And he's Tom Clancy. There, ass. there definitely hell, Chris. There, there definitely <laughs> is a, a bit of a. I don't know. Like, like I was saying last week, like the difference between Snake and like the difference between like how Kaz is played in this game is kind of different. Kaz is definitely has a bit more of that melodramatic, like, like oh, yeah. over the top, like we built that, like kind yeah. of like line delivery that you would expect. Talking, that was yeah, that you'd expect. In, yeah, it was bad acting, but that's but, what you would expect in an older Metal Gear. But game. but also like, remember when Skullface started talking? That also seemed like kind of tame it, it felt kind of dry yeah. it, it did like we're talking like think about the fucking villains in this series yeah. like they were insane Volgan, good lord Volgan. fucking Volgan, the fury the part or, or not not the fury uh the fear <laughs> what oh, the fear but like like they were all just 
it's so weird and insane and over the top and melodramatic in the best possible ways and goofy in the best possible ways oh, if that stuff goes out of metal gear oh, then what we get is kind of a strange but now kind of boring story and i don't want that you kind of end up with like a splinter cell sort of thing which isn't necessarily bad, but it's not Metal it's Gear. It's not fucking Metal Gear. We don't need more of that. I just... What really irks me, at least with the tone they seem to be going with, is just how fucking brutal it is. How it is to the characters. How much terror... How many terrible things that happen. I mean, Ground Zeroes, there's some dark shit that happens. Oh, yeah. That's where I, that's what I was referring to when I said the tone kind of shifts, because... I mean, I don't, bad stuff happens in Metal Gear games, but man, there's that, some there's, fucked up shit yeah, in this there, game. No, there's always been some fucked up shit in every single Metal Gear game. You know, there's, you know, fucking Otacon having an affair with his stepmother, okay? Oh, in Metal Gear Solid 2. I really forgot but about they, that. But they, they never brought it to the forefront quite like how they're doing it in this. And I really, I would really appreciate it if they would just, you know, push it down a little. You know, push it back in the background. Push wait what back in the background? Wait, we don't well, we can't say what without spoiling it. So let's so well, all like so there is some of so 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 this actual game seems kind of tame, but we've seen a lot of footage of Phantom Pain, and that stuff looks crazy. I haven't seen anything oh, from that, it since oh, E3 that, last that year. Red, that red band trailer. Good lord. Oh, wait, I did watch the Red What Band was trailer. the giant, like, flaming, like, whale thing? Whale, whale thing. <laughs> like, what the fuck was that? So what So what makes you think, after watching, like, if you base it on what you saw of the original Phantom Pain reveal, like, before we knew it was a Metal Gear game, and now that you know it's a Metal Gear game, you know that crazy shit's gonna be there. Because that whole thing was like, there's no way this is a Metal Gear game. And then it turned out to be Metal Gear. Like, yeah. you know there's gonna be crazy shit. Yeah, and you know it's And coming. there's gonna be psychomantises... And stuff. It's gonna get crazy. This thing wasn't crazy. It was kind of boring at times. Like, like in terms of that tone I expect from Metal Gear. Uh, one last thing though. How was the Raiden stuff? So there, the Microsoft exclusive is the Jamis Vu mission, and you play as you know Raiden from Metal Gear Rising. Is that? It's it's well, not what bad. Does he, do? does, does he control so, like Raiden? No. no, he controls exactly like you know Big Boss in well, this. Fuck. But uh, and he trades in his sword for fucking guns, which annoyed the hell out of me. So this is not these is like a reskin. But, but it, yeah, it is a reskin in a way. But they do a couple fun things. So number one, when he's sprinting, he does the, like the lightning sprint on the trailing behind him. He uh, doesn't even have a sword. I know, I know. What? No, the, the, they use the he uses his binoculars to uh, highlight enemies, and based on the color of their highlight, it identifies them whether they're they're human or snatcher. Because this is like a a playoff of Snatcher, you know, Kojima's, you know, 96 game from way back in the day. Mm -hmm. Fucking Sega Saturn, I think. But, yeah, you have to neutralize the humans, Sega, yeah. and you have to kill the uh, the Snatchers. And you, you take them out, and then an event happens, and you have to kill a, a shit ton of it. It suddenly turns into a, an action thing. It's all right. It's kind of fun. I uh, And the, the the intro, I think, is pretty damn good for it. It's quite funny. Hmm. So, it's all right. Ground Zeroes, it's, it's come, it's gone. We'll we'll bring it back. We'll we'll bring Metal Gear Solid up again, obviously, when yeah. Phantom Pain comes I, out. So. I will say that I am currently working on a video editorial slash second opinion piece because I mean Zach put out his video review last week, mm -hmm. right? At it, and we put it up. Uh, but I kind of have some words I want to have to say. So I'm going to oh, do that. Oh shit! No, I I perfect. I I fully Zach respect. Zach sucks. It's a throwdown, you guys. I, I respect Zach's opinion 100. percent It's fine, but His I have things that I want to bullshit. address. <laughs> Why would you spoil the review, bro? God, no, bleep it out. Just bleep it out in post. I'm not bleeping. The that fuck? Out. His score is a spoiler. If there's any <laughs> asshole who skips through that video just to look at the score, he can jump off a cliff or she. Anyways, Zach's review is out. Chris Davis will have a counter argument video up going up on YouTube sometime in the next week or so. That's the plan. Um, so look for that. Let's talk about um, so infamous second son second came son. out yeah. last yep. week. Um, I picked it up and I played it on Friday because for whatever reason it came out on a Friday. Who the fuck? Yeah, what was up with that? I don't know. They're that was they weird. Did. They've handled the they've handled the releases for the the games in that series very strangely. Like Infamous Two came out like the day E3 started. Really? 
yeah well, like the year it came out it came out i remember because it came out the day e3 started we had our e3 meetup the last day of e3 and that was when um tim showed up for the meetup and he was like he's like yeah i finished infamous 2 i was like that game came out three days ago <laughs> well he does that yeah he does he does do that but no uh and uh the last of us came out during e3 last year so really yeah. oh yeah Talon though it's just funny they release it on on a time when they know just about all the gaming press in the fucking world is <laughs> unavailable unavailable <laughs> <laughs> which is confusing because it's they're releasing out. these really fucking good games uh -huh. yeah so i've played at this point i've played about has anybody else here touched Infamous? No. no. Nope. I got I don't it, have though. A PS4. I'm going to play it uh, maybe tonight after new release Tuesday. I'll, okay. I'll probably play it this fall. I've played about nine or ten hours of it so far. Um, and? Are you, and? So you're and? good? Far. No good? I mean, if you look at, when you look at the percentage that it says I've completed, it's I've completed about 60% of the entire game. Oh, wow. What? So, I'm, I mean, so I'm you're, probably, you're probably pretty far. As far as yeah, like, like I've, side quests, and but like, that's also like me spending a lot of time because the the it's, so it's so it takes place in Seattle. Like that's a first for the series. It takes place in a re in a real a city. location based off yeah. of a real world location, um, and it's a smaller. It's, it's I mean it's you can tell it's kind of like a vertical slice of of Seattle. It's not meant to be like to scale. So mm -hmm. it's it's basically two kind of um, land masses separated by like a river. But it's it's more about capturing the feel of Seattle, and it has like some landmarks that people who live in Seattle will recognize pretty instantly, like the Space Needle and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it still feels pretty small, um, in terms as far as like open world goes. But it's very condensed. It's very dense in terms of like there's a lot of stuff going on. It's very detailed. On the city, is it just a regular city? What do you mean by that? Quote? Well, in 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 the first Infamous, I didn't. I don't remember much of it. Was, I think it was Imperial City or something like that. First one was Imperial City. Second but one those was... were like, like ruined cities. Like, like they had. Well, the like, like there was weird buildings. Or there and would be. Stuff there and... would be in the first one. There was like three or four different districts, and there were some that were like still inhabited and everything. And then there were some that weren't. Yeah. In in two, it was like kind of split in half. There was. There was like the New Orleans, like French Quarter style section, and then there was like the Katrina flooded area. Yeah, yeah. that like yeah. So but they they were like. Let me answer your question with a setup. shanty castles and stuff or something. Later, yeah. yeah, oh yeah, you're right. Like later in the game, like factions started building like these bases yeah. out of oh, like, yeah, yeah, scrap yeah. Yes. metal and shit. So let me answer your question with a, kind of a setup for the game because it does take a little bit different approach since the end of Infamous Two. There's not like the, there's there's. A, this is a sequel and then it takes place in the same universe, but it kind of and it, some things happen at the end of, at the end of Infamous 2 that kind of make this game possible. But outside of that, there is really not any direct connection with Infamous. None at all. That's So Cole is not really I mean, they don't really mention him. Well, there's like a well, well, there's a there's like a pre-order bonus or something you, you could can get wear, for it where you it was wear like a jacket. That yeah, it was like <laughs> Cole's legacy or whatever. No, did, I mean, did you play that? No, I haven't played that. And okay. they, they specify that this is based on the good ending of Infamous yes, 2. Yes, it That's is based, it is based off of the good ending of Infamous 2. So if you've played Infamous 2, you will probably know what that means. But um, there's no, really, there's no, at the point I'm at now, there's really no mention of Cole outside of seeing like some, there's a few uh, Easter eggs hidden about whatever that directly reference Cole. But, you know, it's kind of starting fresh, but... It's a world now that's inhabited by a bunch of people that are called conduits now that have that have had these powers that they didn't have before, like awakened in them. Mm -hmm. And of course, human beings being what they are, they re they kind of like they're freaked out by it. So there's obviously people that are scared of them, and they they end up creating this um like fact this military or government run military faction that is in charge of like rounding them all up like it's freaks. freaking excellent yeah it's excellent yeah, it yeah. Okay, yeah okay there we days go days of future Good. past days of future past or a little dead rising too um, as well and obviously oh come on <laughs> no 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 seriously <laughs> they're, they're, wait, it, wait what comparison did you just make also dead, dead rising, rising too well but three. it's it's dead, dead, dead rising three it's x-men because these are people with superpowers yeah not because they're zombies <laughs> correct well, no yeah. anyway so no. to answer your question with, whatever to answer your question the city is Bishop in the it game. It is Seattle, but the the gov the military faction has set up these like really intricate like checkpoints and like m like holding facilities throughout the city. That kind of games. that kind of yeah, kind of I mean, they have like cages literally set up where they just when they capture these people they they throw them in these cages. But, I, I read so something... they're all over the place. Yeah, I read something that the the internment camps were kind of based on what we did in the the forties with 
you know, Japanese, Japanese Americans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So like they'll literally pull them off the streets and just or throw them in a straight up cage. Yeah. Um, so it has this kind of like oppressed feeling to it. It kind of takes the place of like, you know, in, in the older ones, it felt more like, um, like maybe if huh, I feel bad saying, I don't know how to describe that. They're like shanties, like really, you know, these feel more like technological, like opp oppressive, like government or military Mm -hmm. structures that kind of oppress the people and as you go through the game everything's broken out into like little uh, or the the map is separated out into these um, districts and you can liberate each district this is also very similar to i think crackdown or something it, is, it has some it has very has a lot in common with crackdown so yeah. and you're liberating each district by um removing their control over that district by taking out their structures and um finding high-ranking agents that are kind of hidden throughout the world so same thing as infamous one and two uh, yeah but is it linear what about like the districts like the story yeah um i mean there well, are the this... districts you no no you can do them anywhere you want and you okay. can you can choose okay. to completely ignore them if you want but it's cool because you can you can destroy the structures and they're gone like once you destroy them like the destruction stays there so is... they won't rebuild cool uh, which it... is are, is the environment of the city is it gated in any way as in you have to meet a certain story requirement in order to get the next area the only one that i know of is when you go from one chunk, one land mass to the next there's a bridge that connects them and you can't yeah. cross the bridge so they gate it. Yeah. okay yeah. yeah but just that one second like infamous yeah yes. but every every other aspect of it it's kind of like uh grand theft auto when you know you can't progress yeah. to the next major area right, until you hit a story island. mission yeah so so let's talk about gameplay because I was reading some reviews and or I was reading some impressions. And the word on the street is that this game is infamous as hell. Well, like it's, it's just I would assume it is so. a straight up sequel to Infamous. So if you're expecting Infamous Second Son to not be like Infamous, you are I'm crazy. saying <laughs> from from what it reads, people were expecting, especially because it's Infamous Second Son, it's a new setting, a new character. People were expecting it to be people described it as kind of like going from infamous one to two in terms of like this game kind of feeling very much like those so everything about this game feels or looks um new because you're playing with a whole different several different sets of powers which i'll talk about in a second characters are all new um, the story they're telling is a little bit different, but it still feels very much like an infamous game. Not even Zeke is in there. There is a character that kind of replaces Zeke, <sighs> but I like this character huh? quite a bit. If I mean, you learn this in the first five five seconds of the game. You, the, the character that that kind of talks to you and interacts with you throughout the game is your brother. So there's a, there's this like sibling relationship, which is cool. And this is the biggest surprise with this game so far for me is that the characters are really fucking good see that that's what i kind of spotted early on okay. Del delson is an that. awesome that, protagonist that, I, and his that's brother a, that's an awesome change because i i really like the infamous series i like the first two fucking characters but are cole so lame. is nothing no like he, he is nothing and none of those characters were interesting at all mm -hmm. zeke was okay but they did everything they could to make you hate him like Several times. No, nothing, this, nothing about yeah. those stories are really that memorable. No, no, no. It's it, yeah. It, there is a, there is a huge, huge jump. Like it's it's hard to believe the same studio produced these characters as the ones mm -hmm. who produced the characters from the first two. Um, Delson is a fantastically developed character. He animates incredibly well. I mean, that's I, mean, I guess part of that has to do with the fact that it's a PS4 and game. He actually has like a, a personality. He has a fantastic personality. <laughs> His voice acting is delivered. His hmm. facial expressions are awesome. His brother you, you interact with, like the relationship that's going on yeah. there is pretty interesting. The, the setup for the villain is really interesting. There are some supporting characters that you meet early on in the game that are um, that are really well done. There's that, this one like lady that, because you, you're a Native American and you're on this you know reservation or whatever, and mm -hmm. there's a woman that, or is, that kind of serves as like his mother figure or grandmother type figure, mm -hmm. and she's, she's really well developed. You don't see her very often outside of the intro to the game, but like... They build a, a kind of an attachment to that character in the first like twenty minutes, and then okay. you know I just didn't see that coming. That that was something that really kind of blew me away. That stuff looks good, and I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, but let's roll it back to gameplay here. Powers. Uh, well, no, no, no. Before we get on to powers, and this is like 
I feel like I didn't kind of, I wasn't very clear. Okay. Like there's, there's a lot of, this was seconds. There's a lot of, sequ- like I could, I can hate Metal Gear Solid 2, but love Metal Gear Solid 3 or whatever. No, but like, like if I hate Infamous, so you know one that, and two, I'm not gonna like this. So I, I'm assuming part of what you're talking about is the way you you like scale like your climbing buildings, right? Like everything that right? feels exactly the same. That hasn't if changed at all. But but is it? It just it also still kind of feel like a third person shooter. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, but it, it's got a real nice, sexy new coat of paint and these new characters and this new story. But it's still very much like just Infamous Three, also. Yes, but let me in just, terms in terms of gameplay. Yes, but they give you so powers play a big role in this game in terms of diver, like diversifying it or separ- or making it stand apart from its predecessors. In that there's four apparently there's four power skill trees, right? Skill trees, yeah, um, which are which are cool. Wait, are, should you spoil those? I'm not because I remember I, I won't spoil them. The they one, revealed I mean, neon and smoke. Those are the first two you get. I okay. won't spoil the last two. Okay, good. Um, but yeah, so neon smoke. So, but each one of these comes with like a certain set of abilities, right? That are just kind of based. They're all very different in terms of like how you use them. So you can use them kind of strategically if you want, but they all come with a different means of traversing the world. Okay. So I like to compare it to if you played the oh, bless you, if you played the DLC for Infamous Two, the Festival of Blood. You remember how I fucking like just my pants mm. over the fucking bats. The back cloud? The that ba- was pretty cool. Every single one of the powers in this game has, like, its own bat cloud. One of them... Yeah, like, you can like use smoke neon- to use vents to get up on top yeah, of Yeah, so you use yeah. vents, and then you can... You can you can, come up, you can literally stay afloat in this game just by, like, chaining together vents and hitting fans that blow you up into the air. And, and as you progress and you unlock new builds the skill tree, it extends the amount of time or the amount of cost these things mm-hmm. have. So... Or lessens the the cost for well, each one. And right? he still has like an analog to like that that like yeah, and you what, can also do the, like hover. the static thrusters. Or exactly, whatever, and they all have kind of a version of that. Of that. Yeah. But like neon, like you start out with, kind of gives you the ability to like run super fast. Like they they say speed of light in the game, but obviously it's not speed of light. But you know you could run super fast, and at first you can only do it for like five or six seconds at a time. And you have to wait for it to recharge and then go again. So you get flash powers. You, you get the speed force. You eventually unlock the ability to do that infinitely. You get the speed force. So you can like oh literally God. kick into like high, like super speed with um, the neon power, and you can just run. And as long as you don't hit something that that prevents you from going forward, is there ever any? You're running infinitely. Is there ever any like a need to like and chain is, stuff together, like go do neon to run really fast, and then like switch to a different see, power? No, that, yes, that's, that's well, what I wanted to ask because I was wondering how these. I wasn't certain about the brawling in the game, mm-hmm. you know, because it wasn't very strong in Infamous One or Two. No. But I was wondering if you could like chain the powers together mid combat, kind of like a DMC, for example. Yes. Uh, well, the thing is, you switch powers in the game by draining different power sources. So, like uh, when you when you okay. when you absorb the smoke, he becomes smoke power. Okay. If you absorb neon, I mean, there's only like so many buttons and controllers. There's, there wouldn't be a way for them hey. to like. Hey. There, there are some games out there that have accomplished but that. Also, DMC. also yeah. this makes sense. He's running off. He's powering no, himself yeah, up when he throws this. Fair, stuff. like sure. But I just did a boss fight last night that had me switching back and forth between neon and smoke. So it was like puzzle like kind of. Yes, and this boss fight was awesome. Okay. Um, okay. And there were like moving platforms and sh- and there was fucking lava and things that shoot you into the air and you have to like you have to absorb neon because when you go into like the, the first person or third person shooting mode kind of for neon it kind of you have an ability that slows down time temporarily okay. so you can be more precise but he does basically but they the don't same do as much thing power as, as the electric power right where yeah, it's like over the that, camera that, that, and he's going bah, 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 like to shoot yeah but yeah, yeah. Okay, but they also have like a charge that. thing where you can like shoot like a like a more powerful beam or like a like a, like a wave like he did in the last one where he could like where he could like yeah. knock out the smoke like the smoke there. like the charge up smoke ability has more of like a wide shot just tell members. me there's not neon grenades that, that's where everyone no, gets a no, little wait, cheesy wait, wait, like wait. Yeah. electricity grenades electricity yeah. rocket launcher okay there yeah. is smoke what i would grenades. i would only describe as a neon grenade because that's what it kind of looks like but it is one of the most useful abilities and like when you're getting in, like when you're being swarmed by a bunch of dudes, it is strictly for crowd control. But it does not damage them. What it does is it like you throw it and then it, it bolts out like this, and then anyone caught in that beam gets thrown into the air and is in like slow motion, like they're they're Ooh. kind of suspended in air. So you can like I think not, was... and, they, and they have, oh, but no, they also I'm have the ability. So you earn you build up the 
this like meter and when it fills up you have the ability to do like the super attack like you saw in the trailer where he yeah. flies up in the air and yeah. each one has their own ability like that but you earn the ability to do that by doing um good like you get like a point for every time you do something good or mm-hmm. something bad so when you like, there are dudes like when they're running at you you can choose to shoot them in the head with your your beam which if you shoot them like once or twice like they'll fucking like they'll disintegrate they're dead or you can shoot at their legs and they'll be like it'll wrap around their legs and like they'll be constricted and they'll fall over and they're alive you subdued them but they're alive yeah, so you get right. a point for that and when you've done that consecutively five or six times you can do one of these supercharged attacks <sighs> okay uh-huh. big question here but you can like throw a grenade and then while they're suspended go and they're all they're all subdued and you get three points big question here hold on okay this is on the the good and evil stuff in, in, well. the, in the story here's my question like I think I went evil in the last two infamous games just because, you know, sit, like, you know, fucking wrapping around people's feet just sounds kind of dumb. Sorry. And, and, and the good and evil stuff in this game is kind of, in the first two games, was kind of corny anyways. No, it, it, so, it, but here's my question. You said the story of the characters is improved. Is that is that just going to get kind of stupid if I start going evil? Or do you not know? I'm playing good. I always. Do you know it. what I mean? Like sometimes, like, like the characters I'm kill written, all these people. <laughs> the characters are written a bit more to skew towards the good well, side. Well, yeah, like, 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 like well, the harder it, thing would be to writing it, that character to be evil no, no, no. but still be good. The question, the question by, like, is, is well it, done. The, the real question is: Is it a good evil mechanic, or is it more like Mass Effect, where it's like Paragon Rogue, where he's still a hero, he's still doing good things? Is 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 he cleaner about it, or does it he seems like... more Paragon Rogue because there's there's still very binary decisions that's either like Mm -hmm. it's either like blue or red right but instead of like let this person live or kill them it's like it's like um defy your brother and protect him or teach this person to you know uh, it's it's not it's never comes down to or at least hasn't so far as it come down to kill this person and let them live it's always been like defy your brother and stand up for your stand up for this person because your brother is kind of like not this kind of um antagonistic against conduits he's kind mm-hmm. of he has like a bias he's right big, so yeah his brother will be like we need to we need to arrest him or turn him in or whatever and you're like you can either like say hey bro i'm like this calm down like i'm a conduit chill out he's cool or you can say yeah let's beat him up and say take his money. you know you i haven't taken any of the, in the options that are quote mm-hmm. unquote rogue yeah but it doesn't seem quite as I just, know. I like being evil because I like blowing up everything. Well, the thing is, I'm blowing up everything too. But you don't get you don't get penalized because your your goal in this game, regardless of whether you're good or evil, is still to blow shit up. Because no, you're, but you're, if there's like innocence, like there were times in the first two infamous games where like you need to pick out all the fucking bad guys in this crowd of innocent people, and I would just get a car and explode everyone. Mm. The thing is. AI seems to like cause civilians to run a lot. Okay. So they'll oh. scatter. So if you blow shit up, you don't lose you don't karma necessarily I mean, you killing. could care you could potentially kill a couple civilians. I've killed a few civilians, but it doesn't count against me so harshly that suddenly even though I'm trying to play good, I'm suddenly playing bad. Right. <sighs> I I I am curious what I was going to ask about the this morality system for the game. Mm-hmm. It really didn't affect the way Infamous 1 or 2 played. Uh, in terms of gameplay, other than like the the visual design of the city, how does that affect your character? I mean, will you get like rewards from random citizens coming by saying, "Hey, have this, you know, shard of whatever that gives you powers"? Um, I don't. There hasn't been any like direct reward like that. <laughs> I do notice people like cheering me on and taking like they'll take cell phone pictures of me when you like stand still. They'll be like, "Oh, cool, it's Delvin, Devin, and we'll... Delson, Delson," and they'll take pictures of you with their phone. <laughs> How good is this character? You so just... I'm, ta- I'm trying to order my wrong fucking names. Thoughts. Okay. Well, it is it's, a weird name. Yeah, it's today. not that. Well, let the record. Good. Whatever. I never called Shepard, you know, Sherman or. Let the record show. At the beginning Shemp. of this conversation, I said Delson like three or four times. Okay, I know. Yeah, I'm just did. giving you a hard time. But they don't give you anything directly as far as like like honestly the biggest disappointment about this game for me is still the fact that they haven't really like they've made improvements to just about everything else in terms of combat character story everything but the fucking binary like good or evil decisions it's are corny, still are, right? they're still pretty cut and dry. The only other like real question concern i had was we were talking a little bit about this earlier and you told me one of the other power abilities that you unlocked which we're not going to say here because we don't want to spoil it but it sounded really 
weird. Yes, like kind of goofy almost. No, does it does it feel ones. like does it feel? <laughs> what I guess what I'm getting what at say? is with with flatulence. The, this isn't as cut and dry. Like it, it's not like saying like oh you know, coal had electricity powers. Yeah, like that's I can wrap my head around that. That's fine. It seems like it seems like Delson's power sets are kind of getting more and more. So he started out with the smoke set. Like okay, there have been characters like that before. The neon set. I don't really know what that's supposed to be. Is that like Jubilee? And then this other set that you're telling me about, like Flash, Jubilee, and yeah, Wolverine. Yeah, this other set that you're telling me about, it sounded even weirder. And I, yeah, like, like if it, I can't pigeonhole it, this to what, a Marvel, no, no, no. Character. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, does it feel like do the do the powers feel like they're a bit more like out there? Do they feel goofy? They do. do they do they clash with the tone of the story? Is it like mm. I'm a serious freedom fighter, but then no. he's like throwing sparkles everywhere? Like, no, 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 no. Because <laughs> Delson's like his like. His dialogue that he has throughout the game where he's just talking and like commenting on things, which is pretty he's he's voiced by Troy Baker. He does a fantastic job, but he like he'll comment on things. So he, he sets a very specific tone for the game because he's mm-hmm. very sarcastic and, mm-hmm. and that's 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 funny. But yes, the powers that you come across in this game, even powers from other people that you don't absorb are strange. Are very strange. But like, that's cool. Uh, let me just spoil like this the is comic not, book guy. Let me just say with weird powers. Let me just No, I didn't I didn't say I had a problem. I just didn't know like just, there's a certain your, no, there's look, a certain tone, you know. This like, is, is this it... is a power I can spoil because it's not a power you get. Okay. And it's not even it's 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 an optional thing that I think okay. is built. It's it's one of those things that's like connected to the PlayStation Network. You can do this to unlock more of the story. Yeah. Where it's basically like a mystery where you follow this character that you see throughout the world and it connects to like some website thing that they have that you can like it'll unlock things on the website that you can use to unlock additional information about the story, whatever. But there is a character, and I did the first mission for him that you you chase this person around the streets. His power is origami what origami? when he flies through the air, or it's paper he flies through the air and like paper shoots like, that's like everywhere cool. haven't you ever seen but like when, but when, it's cool because the, the paper? paper the paper like when he leaves a paper trail and he's flying around it all folds into like origami and it's like little paper Wait, cranes so, like, floating he everywhere. just manifests like reams of paper his his yes. power is littering which, which is no, even like you, what is that, what is that a, anime what is the, mm, no, no, no 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 there's reader an anime read or die there's a there's about a fucking chick who controls paper like that. Yeah, yeah it's weird. It's like that, it's a cool anime. But though. Here, I'll tell you this. This, this is what they. This is wouldn't what... that just be like a control over wood though? Like, like why paper? That's like a man made thing. Why would there be like a beast living know. shit out of me? I don't know. It's it's weird. It's cool though. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just DC saying, has the guy out. who's on time all the time. I will say now, this. that's a power I can. <laughs> I can tell you this right now. Their motive, like the developers' motivations when developing this game, like when coming up with the powers, were like literally. Let's what? not do anything that's no, no, no. ever been no. done before. It's gonna it be. It looks like no. They it, wanted to. it was literally based off of what can we make look the fucking coolest with the new PS yeah, with, with the new technology yeah. because yeah. Like, yeah. like visual effects. Like, yeah, because yeah. like neon is fucking beautiful. Like when you yeah. walk under a neon sign and you like hold your hand up and like sh- it all like all the particle effects that come out and then go it like. That's fucking beautiful. Yeah, I just, like watching this person fly through the sky in little origami cranes, like floating everywhere. It's fucking crazy. This series, I think, would be so much more successful if, like, each and they fucked this up with Infamous too, and we've okay. talked about this. If each iteration had a new character that had like a single, very well developed set of like powers, powers. That that are that feel completely different than the previous game, you know, c- kind of like um where Darksiders was going. The thing is, they didn't... you know, like, the, the, and you would have a new character to go like, man, if it was like, like, like to go, this is gonna be nothing like that last game. Well, this is, if a, it was, if this it is was an like, ice dude. If it was like a basic set of powers that wasn't yeah. like one thing, it wasn't like yeah. one specific thing of like, oh, they can shoot bolts out of their hand, but it was like, no, they have a manipulation of some specific force that can yeah. be used in many different ways. Yeah, that. that... But like, honestly, on... like, like, think about like comic books. No. You know, the characters that have like, you know, a bunch of different things they can do aren't as L- cool. Let me just say this yeah. is cl- in closing. We spent a lot of time talking about this, but let me just say this: they didn't set the, that they didn't set it up that way after one, um, and I, I think they realized that, and they so they ended two in a very specific way that would set them up to be able to do that going forward with the series. Because now there are conduits everywhere. In the first game, it was like Cole was like a very unique kind yeah. of individual. <clears throat> Um, and now they've set it up so there's powers everywhere. But it also feels like they felt like now that they've set that up, 
they had, but they're doing the first game on the PS4. They're like, we need to like push this technology as far as we can. So like, let's experiment with a bunch of cities and see what sticks. So they're like, let's come up with a character who can drain other people's powers. Mm-hmm. That way we can try experimenting with other powers. Yeah. Um, so in, in a lot of ways, the game kind of feels like kind of feels like a tech demo in a lot of ways. But at mm-hmm. the same time, and so it feels like a tech demo and a lo- also a launch type, kind of like a launch window PS4 game, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But with a level of polish on it that I have never seen from a launch oh, window okay. game. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, just two real quick questions, if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're they're both again about the the morality system. I do mind, but okay. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, so going back to like the the story and the cutscenes and how that plays out, is there like a branching story based on the you know things that are going on? I guess I won't really know the answer to that until I try I would... and play uh, play bad as well. I if, think I think with this series, don't have super high expectations. For I'm, I'm not. System. I'm not. You know, but I'm just I'm just curious in that regard. It's and almost also, it's, it's almost it's, it's almost kind of strange that they've insisted on continuing to push yeah. the. I feel like I feel like it's not even necessary. Yeah. Or, and like, it'd be a, it'd be a fine game even if they didn't have the morality system in there because it's that inconsequential. And it, are also are there morality specific missions in there? Yes. Okay, so and they also cancel out the other. So normally you have like a white opposite. icon that appears on on your map to like progress the story. Every once in a while you'll see a white one and then a blue one and a red one. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I don't. So I the same as infamous one too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Whoa. Oh, oh wait. I forgot, I got... Last thing I mentioned. I forgot to mention. This is so cool. This okay. is so stupid and small. But he. So he's like a. He's like a. A tagger. He took. He, he does graffiti art and whatnot. Hmm. You can like tag. So you're trying to raise. He's so oh, urban. You're trying to raise like um, the morale. Or the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not morality. The uh, morale. Morale. Like yeah. Morale of the district you're in. So you yeah. can part of lowering that percentage of oppression is tagging the environment and when you get when you can tag the environment it gives you like a you can tag something nice and like friendly like or you can tag messages inspirational or you can tag something very like dark and menacing like a dick that'd be fucking realistic like a big (laughs) red dick that'd be sweet Uh, big me um but so you do when you do this um you like hold the like it tells you to hold the controller sideways so you like hold up the spray can so you hold the controller sideways and then you shake it up and you hear like the like the, like you're shaking up a can oh, right yeah. and then you like point the controller and you can like so he puts up he tapes up these like um stencil art and then you like you spray paint it and then he like does it again he doesn't the freehand it <laughs> bullshit but uh <laughs> it's what's crazy about it, i've done it like 20 or 30 times at this point Every single one of them is different, and you never know what you're gonna get until you've you've done it. Like, and they're always like, he'll find a spot where there's like things on the wall, or whatever, and then he'll like do art that makes it look like they're interacting with the things on the wall. Like, it's actually like really cool, like Kinda graffiti like art. Well, do they include like the sly art that I've been seeing a bunch of? Yeah, and, okay. yeah. It's all like it's all like he'll paint like he'll paint like you paint something, and it, if, if they're like, oh, that's cool, and then like the screen will go dark for a second, you hear this like shaking, so he continues to paint, and then when it fades back out, you see what you just painted, but it's like interact. There's something else that he added. Yeah. See, it's like I I think it'd be really cool, and I'm I don't think they would have had time to add this, but if you could actually add your art into the game. Of course, there would always, there would be like Dicks. penis version of Seattle just well, they, everywhere. Yeah, dude, that you would never. I would never let Joseph have the this stuff that, that he does is supposed to be very like inspirational, very much like Banksy kind of stuff. Yeah, like, no, kind yeah, of it is. Yeah. It's very inspir- inspired by Banksy and yeah. stuff like that. But okay, it's just I, cool. It's it's very very it's varied a lot. I have nice. one last question. That's a big one for me. Okay, that I knew going into this thing. I didn't want to bring it up early because I didn't want to be negative. So you know the answer already? No, I don't. Okay. Oh, I thought you said you know the answer. But there's something I. I, I finished the first Infamous, and I, I really liked it. Second one, I stopped playing like halfway through. There's something I really kind of hate about the Infamous series. I hate. Even though you're this dude with all these powers, you're like made of paper. Made of paper? Like, it's so really easy really. to die in the Infamous games, and I mm-hmm. hate that. Like, like if I run into like like a crowd of dudes... Like I'll I'll die in like no time. Okay, to, me, to the point where I like I just have to fucking run to the other fucking block and like recharge my health and okay, yeah. You know you when have I, to play very carefully yeah, when for I, a character who seemingly should be very powerful. When okay. I played one and two, you know I would before I got to a mission objective, I would map out like where the points of electricity were so I could heal up just in case. And and. Even though you had all these interesting skill trees, I always went with more health early on because I fucking hated that. Okay, let me tell. Let me, you can, if you do, you can't if you're not smart about it. There are situations sometimes where you can take a lot of damage, but 
they give you so many options in terms of traversal. Like when you unlock Neon, you can not only do you run super fast, you can run straight for up vertical walls. So the what? point where and and that that grenade thing I mentioned before, which gives you, which is there for crowd control, super important. And like the ability to like aim with your Neon and slow down time is incredibly important. You can also jump on top of cars, and when you when you press the jump button when you're on top of a car, he quote unquote ignites their exhaust fumes and like the car like poof, explodes under you and shoots you into the air. Hmm. So like there are a lot of different ways so to like, he's traverse. Just murdering people left and right to get a boost. I don't know why it doesn't count against you when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing I've been kind of like what car bomb. Um, it also well the car doesn't explode. I don't know. Like, oh, well. it ignites the fumes behind the car, so like it creates this like small explosion but the car itself doesn't explode it's hard to explain i don't know it's weird okay <laughs> but there are a lot of different ways to traverse the environment to the point where if you're smart about it you shouldn't have that problem too often there are a few times where yes there are a lot of people on screen at once and shooting at you from all over and yeah but the thing is like especially once you upgrade that neon power to where you can run infinitely you can just go into like an like a speed run and just do circles around them and like no one can hit you it's like that's kind of cool and you'll you can just wait for your health to recharge or you can just f go up to a, a rooftop and then absorb more neon when you ever you absorb a power it refills your health as well so then you can e use that opportunity to switch powers or just absorb more health and then go back into the fray so relative to the first two games and i thought even maybe the second one was worse than the first one i like the you second feel, one no i'm saying specifically on this issue yeah of feeling like you're made of fucking paper i don't feel like i'm made of paper like that origami guy. But you like did. Yeah, that's all the story. <laughs> I'm saying, do you feel like relative to the first two games, mm -hmm. is it better about that? Yes, it's been a while since I've played them. Though, so I don't say remember. that about the first two games either. No, um, I feel like it. My instinct is to say yes, it's better. But it's been a while since I have played either one, so it's okay. kind of hard for me. That, to that's remember. that's seriously probably my biggest issue with this series. Is I that will say this. I feel weak. I will say this. This is the. I've had more fun like. I feel you, you can move very fast, you can move very... You have a lot of control over your movement in this game. And the city is arranged in such a interesting way that there's a lot of options for traversal. I feel like I've had more fun in this game. This is like the most fun I've had traversing a city or a world as like a superhero, quote-unquote, mm -hmm. since like Spider-Man 2. Okay, cool. I mean... Well, I mean, and that's yeah. even I'm even that's taking into I'm taking into consideration like I would say Batman, but then again, like that's kind of all kind of like well, well, in Infamous One, there was a bit of an issue when he got to the powered out districts. Yeah. But like, mm -hmm. yeah, like the precision annoying. that I like, there's also like a crack. Oh, sorry, I, I know we've talked about this for a while, but there's a crack. There's kind of a crack element too. Like, remember hunting down the the yeah, orbs? Shards and stuff. There are there are um, these like floating um, these flying like uh, little robots that you have to like shoot and absorb their their shards that you use to upgrade your abilities that are scattered throughout the entire world sometimes they're up high and whatever so the, getting to them is a lot of fun and the i i often find myself like i'm never going to make this jump or whatever and i just like catapult myself and try and combine the powers to like prolong my time in the air or whatever and then landing like perfectly where i thought i was never going to be able to land like nail it like they get you have this really awesome sense of like control Cool. Over movement, cool. it feels really good. Cool, and that's infamous. Sorry, sorry, that was a bit long winded, but pretty good game. I'm enjoying it. I'm gonna review it. I'm almost done with it. So, um, let's move on. Chris Davis, that's me. You played that Bioshock DLC that came out today. Yes, Burial C Episode Two. Did yeah, it's uh, I'm really enjoying it so far. So I'm, I've put in about two hours. Okay, which is already thirty minutes longer than the. First than the first episode yeah i know a... uh and i think i'm about halfway through with it okay because uh, i just got into the next area and you know how like in uh, the previous games and like minerva's den there were two segmented you know little exploration areas yes uh it, it's structured the same way as far as i can tell this far uh but yeah i've put in about two hours i think i'm halfway through and it does a lot of different things now 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 i i, I want to mention a few things first number one I love the opening for this. For this I, particular episode? For this particular episode. I won't spoil the opening, but it's just, it's the happiest moment in the history of the Bioshock universe right there. The happiest moment? I don't yes. even know how to interpret that. No, there, there's, it's a really happy moment. And then all of a sudden, Elizabeth finds herself back in, in Rapture. And she's right next to, you know, she's at the where episode one ended. 
Oh, okay. So ha- have you? Can we I not spoil all... episode one? Because I was specifically waiting for two. Okay, so well, I'm, not, I'm not going to say anything. I heard that the one of the big faults of one was that it ended, kind of like with a no nothing ending, or with, with a with a, it just didn't end well, and and I assume that it well maybe if I played it, it with two I wouldn't have that issue. It, you you get the feeling when you when episode one ends that you, you need some more context. I I can, okay. I can tell you that in uh, the the MacGuffin in question, uh, in episode one court. Now let's get it. Comes the MacGuffin. Over. MacGuffin. It's it's a movie term. You know that the object for the which device. everybody has to go yeah. for. Oh okay. Got you know, like the briefcase in uh, in uh, Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. Yeah, that's a MacGuffin. Okay. Everybody wants it. I don't know why I've never heard this term. Yeah. Rosebud. I learn new things. New things every day. Like it's all the time. Man. You just learned something. I did. I learned. It's the only thing. Damn it! I forgot to go by the grocery store. I was going to get y'all Charles to chew. I thought you were going to pick up some... I'm serious. I thought you were just having this like random epiphany. Like, I forgot to go to the grocery store. Anyways, back to Bioshock. I got y'all cookies, so oh. that's good enough for now. The Maltese Falcon. Always wanted to see that, actually. There's an alarm. Like a good film noir. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, you, you uh, there, there's a MacGuffin that's in episode one. It plays over in episode two, and Elizabeth's trying to get to this MacGuffin. But at the same time, there's some interesting plot things going on with Elizabeth because you control, you play as Elizabeth in this DLC. Was it that way in episode one? No, no, it wasn't. Okay. You you played as Booker okay. in you play episode one. Elizabeth? Yeah, you play as cool. Elizabeth. But the thing is, they take away her powers. She's no longer, you know, but she corresponding to the end of Infinite. Does uh, she use a gun? Is it still yeah, a shooter? Yeah, she can use a gun. And it kind of is, but that's the thing, though. They take away your power. She's a normal person now. She can't activate the terror. She doesn't have anything. So it suddenly becomes a stealth-focused game. Uh-oh. In fact, it's built entirely around stealth. And the game will punish you if you try to go into battle against people. You will die The whole so DLC, easily. there's no co- The last piece of there is combat. DLC and there's no combat? There is combat. There's combat, I'm but they, they kind of dumb down the AI. The, the first weapon they give you is a crossbow. And this crossbow has a variety of uh, non-lethal weaponry, like a like a tranquilizer dart, like a, a gas grenade dart, things like that. You know, kind of like Blacklist, for example. Like, kind of like that. I do like Blacklist. That was, it's a good game. But uh, no, they, they structure it like a stealth game. So they kind of dumb down the AI. So if you get spotted, so it's got the, it's got the standard stealth meters these days. So stage one, they fill up and they start looking for you. Exclamation point above the head. And then stage two, that fills up and they start attacking you. Two exclamation points above the head. It's actually literally two exclamation points. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Why are we two, all doing two this? <laughs> sets of exclamation points, actually. But anyway, yeah. No, so... Uh, so those fill up and they'll start attacking you. But if you run away or you're able to knock them out, other enemies may not notice the sound of gunfire. But I mean, if you run away, I mean, if you run away like 20 yards and you get out of their sight, they'll lose track of you. And then they'll go back to the random you know, patrols. So it's kind of dumb in that regard. <laughs> like, why do they fall for that? <laughs> Sorry. Somebody in chat just said, Nick, your zipper is open. And I looked down. I was like, wait, they can't even see me. Oh, me. So... Let me just get this straight. This is this is not me knocking it necessarily. Okay. But the last piece of Bioshock Infinite DLC, the last piece of Bioshock content we're ever gonna get from Irrational, yes. has no combat. Like no, there, there, in, what is wrong with that? There, there is sense. combat, but it v- very rarely throws you into an engagement. Which you actually I'm just I'm just having like, a hard but time isn't picturing. This a good thing. I like the combat I in Bioshock. I think it's sad that a, you playing Elizabeth with a fucking crossbow. That just seems so not that but fucking it, it's, Elizabeth. It's kind of it's kind of cool in that regard because it turns it into a stealth game, and therefore you have no, to I avoid enemies you. all the time. No, that's you, fine. In the but... first area, so uh, there is a plot point corresponding to this, which I won't spoil. But in this first area, you run into a big daddy, and he's you know patrolling the entire you know main concourse. As of this big area. daddies do. That's this big long. daddy in particular hates you. Hates you with a fiery passion of a thousand suns. And if he spots you, he will immediately attack and he will wipe you out. Well, Elizabeth no to clearly yourself. states to the character to let you know, hey, if I take him on, I am going to die. Okay. Why does he hate you? Hey, we yeah. Yeah. By the way, can I just say this, okay, this is completely unrelated. <sighs> Never mind. Chris is going to get mad if I tell the story. What? <laughs> About last week when me and you and Nolan were having 
having dinner before the show. We were oh, talking about Ground yeah. Zeroes. That was, I mean, and he was it like, was kind of spoiler. He was like, but... he was like, he's like, this is okay. So this is not really a spoiler. Let me just tell you this. But and then he was like, it was totally he was trying to make a point, and he was like, this, this, this happens. He was literally, he literally told us about the moment in the helicopter at the end of Ground Zeroes. It was like exactly it was what happened. Like and, that that was and no one and I were just like. What? Yeah. <laughs> How is that not a spoiler? But it was so goofy, I had to talk about it. Like, <laughs> that was his defense. He set it up. He's like, rough. "Don't worry, this is not a spoiler." He's like, "This is totally a spoiler, I, but I can't was... talk about this." It was just funny. Am I the only one that thought that scene was really goofy? Oh no, it's goofy. Uh, it's just, it's not a spoiler. just a hint no, of I'm... goof with a lot of "Oh my god, that just happened." Yeah, yes. but that's like... disgusting. Yeah. Hint, yeah. Was it? Uh, well, and you, you, well a different discussion for a different time. Anyway, <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Anyways, I like a dab of goof. <laughs> so <laughs> dab of goof, just a dollop, just a dab. Okay, so I'm intrigued. I I, I liked um I liked what I played of Barrel at Sea Episode One. My my core this complaint came feels, out of the fact that it was short. This feels more like Minerva's Den. That's honestly. good. I like. It's just like I guess my only like it's been so long since I played a like a Bioshock game that wasn't. Actually, I don't know if it, it's been a, like Bioshock One was combat driven, but at the same time, it was also very carefully paced, and it didn't seem like combat was like all the time. So it's been a while since I played a Bioshock game like that. Is that kind of what it feels like here, where it's it's much less much less emphasis on combat and fighting? So you're spending a lot of time. Yeah, sneaking. It, it feels like early on in Bioshock One, for example, you know how they there had there were stealth elements in there, but they really weren't all that prominent. Yeah. No. Yeah. But, uh, they they built a kind of a whole stealth okay. system around. I'm not. Cool. I'm not trying to knock it because it does sound intriguing. It's just like it's been a long. It's been so long. It's hard to wrap my head around the idea of playing a Bioshock no. game that is stealth. No, but this that so, that I feel like stealth is a perfect fit for the for this oh, fucking yeah. franchise. Sure. I just it, sure maybe. I just haven't played it, so yeah. it's it's hard for me to picture. It's the same. It's a shame that it wasn't really in Infinite. Exactly. So. It was fucking guns ablaze in Call of Duty. But what they've done is they've they've given you some new powers to compensate for it becoming a stealth game. Wait, so you do get powers? You do get new powers. Make up your damn mind, Chris Davis. I never said that. You said they take away your powers. No, they they give you. There are new. uh, (laughs) There are new plasmids. There's a new plasmid. Okay. This plasmid gives you kind of a sonar ability in which you can see enemies through walls. But if you hold down the trigger, it makes you become invisible. Uh, that's pretty cool. I like that. And then there are they've instead of like the the clothing system they had in Infinite that would change your character, they've got uh, plasmid boosts that will affect each individual vigor, and they they stack on top of one another. So you can get uh, additions if you hunt well enough for this sonar ability to where uh, it no longer costs you anything to do the the pulse, you know, to see enemies through walls and things like that. And then there's another one that says, as long as you're still, you can. It doesn't cost any Eve uh, to be invisible. Oh, okay. And then you get a, so. And then you get the sweet mark and execute plasmid, and you get the sweet slow down time uh, plasmid, and then you get the lock picking plasmid. So they're uh, there's no, the, they, they the, actually the lo- the, the no. Don't now. answer. Don't no. They, they no, actually none of that's made. True. They made a, a mini little hacking game to for the lock picking. It's it, it's kind of dumb. I will readily admit that. But... The turret sequence plasmid. <laughs> <laughs> Trigger this plasmid and a turret sequence begins. Escort mission plasmid. Oh man. But no, I, for for this little mini game, uh, basically it's got a little meter that goes back and forth, and and it corresponds to each individual tumbler of a lock. You gotta just press it at the right time in order. It's kind of like Bioshock Two. A little, yeah. Actually, no. With the, like going back and forth, yeah, it's kind of like that. Except each individual tumbler count, tumbler can unlock a door. The catch is, if you catch a red tumbler, it'll set the alarm. Mm, gotcha. So that's like my shot. It's been a while since I played Bioshock Two, but it's been a long time. Anyways, that's cool. I'm gonna download it and play it. It's it's really good. I I kind of like what they're doing with the story because they're going back and examining Infinite story. And making you question some of the events that happened in the game. Oh, what? Oh, let's not open this can of worms. <laughs> well, I, I was just, I just, I want to mention one, and I'm not going to spoil it for you. What are you doing? <laughs> I, just, just trust me on this, okay? Okay. There's a scene in Infinite in which there's something that. Infinite dra- proper. Infinite proper that has something dramatically affect Elizabeth as a character, okay? Are you, you actually are you? see why this scene played out that way. In this DLC. Yes. Okay. 
Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And it all, and it, and it's also so. I, I also want to mention that they also have like a previously on Bioshock thing just to start up the DLC. That's good because I've already forgotten. It actually, it actually, no, it it tells you the entire plot of Bioshock One, and in doing so, it it acknowledges that the good endings canonically correct. Okay, so. You okay, what the? Brad? Did you just have like a fucking seizure over here, Brad? <laughs> he, had a, he had like a stroke for like two seconds. <laughs> I was yawning. That didn't look like a yawn. That didn't look like a yawn. No. <laughs> that looked like a fucking stroke. I did a yawn and then I got a, a chomp. <laughs> <laughs> like I was the lion from uh, yeah, Wizard of Oz. Okay, okay. That's very interesting. You've convinced me, Chris. <laughs> This segment's gone long. It, it's good DLC. People should really try it. I, cool. I got to be on my sweat for the week is that I don't trust Hyde alone. So is there any food out there or things he could tear up <laughs> completely? Well, I left the Cajun fries on the table out there. Oh, my God. What have you done? All right. We'll okay. We got to cut it for a second, guys. We're going to we're going to be back in just a moment. If uh, if you're watching us live at 4pp.tv, stick around after the show. We're going to be doing new release Tuesday. We're going to be playing a demo. For an upcoming survival horror game called Caffeine. Yes. Should be cool. Um, so don't go anywhere, guys. If you're watching us live, we'll be back in just a moment. Proceed. Continue your conversation. Hey, welcome back. It's that video games. What's up with that Oculus Rift, guys? A lot of good stuff. Apparently, they just they had a got good sold. day today. They got Facebook. Bought. They sold out. Facebook. Why? Facebook. Why? Facebook. Wait, as in, as in as in like Facebook? Facebook. How? Why? Bought Oculus Rift. Is there gonna what, be? What? Is there a Facebook like integration with Oculus Rift, you, where you can like look at your timeline in 3D and have like motion controls and click on people's dumb pictures of their food and their babies that I don't care about? You look in a direction <laughs> with your eye, and it highlights a picture and it zooms in on it. That's It'll weird. be like Google Glass, but fucking That's Oculus. Weird. So no, no. this is why? bullshit. Why is this happening? Why aren't they buying, like, fucking Zenga and fucking Farmville and all this that shit? This is oh, horrifying, <laughs> guys. This is bad, bad, bad news. But we don't know if it's bad news, first off. Yes, we do. How do you know this? Because it's Facebook. Remember all of, the, like, the pie in the sky? Like, like, oh, my God, the potential of the Oculus Rift and all these games, you know? <sighs> yeah. Like, all that fuck, it's gone. That just got... You do realize that... Because they've been bought out for Facebook, which, by the way, for two billion, right? Was it two, two billion? Two billion, billion with a with a capital okay. B. Because they've been bought out for two billion dollars. Jesus, that Christ. means that they have the funding and capital necessary to turn this into an actual consumer product. For but they're not going to do now? that. Is this going to be a product that's still? I think they're just going to bankroll it. No, they're not. Wait, they're are you you're saying Facebook? So what you're you're saying that they're just gonna throw all of their Facebook money at it without any of their Facebook creepiness and give us your. Oh no, money. they'll, they'll have being... some of that shit. Yeah, but no, they'll. I think they're gonna bankroll it. I think you're hoping they're gonna bankroll, but what's gonna actually happen? Well, there's no other good reality for this. As a follow-up so... story, Notch has already canceled his his Minecraft yeah. for Oculus Rift as a response because he says really? straight up, quote unquote, Facebook Facebook is creepy. It's creepy. And yeah. he canceled immediately. Canceled Minecraft for the Oculus Rift immediately. Okay, so here's the thing. Was that even that was the thing, that was, and that's kind of sad. How can Facebook, you cancel a project that fast, though? Probably because it wasn't. Well, it, it barely started. I don't started. think it was. I don't it think was it was something that was actually in the like, pipeline. I, I think I, he was. Yeah, just, I don't think that was a project that well, they could have been but, working but on for a long time. All, you, no, it wasn't. The Oculus Rift has like isn't. Isn't that like an open platform? Like they've been selling dev kits for a while. Now. They've yeah. got a new shipment of dev kits going out. That, like, can't anybody pretty much make whatever they want? Like, yeah, they've got they got of... the Gen two based on the Crystal Cove uh, prototype coming out for developers later this year, and then they think consumer version maybe twenty fifteen. Maybe, but listen, still, listen. Here's the here's listen. The... No, listen. I'm listening. Oh no, Facebook does not buy this company for two billion dollars unless they have some really big plans for it they don't buy them just to like release it because they think people are going to buy a lot of oculus rifts they don't do that for two billion dollars there's no fucking way 
They oh. they probably already had the ball rolling on some ideas, and Oculus Rift is just now a part of that. You know, now that I think about it, is it possible no. that no? Sh- is it possible that this that? is this is going to eventually turn into Facebook's answer to Google Glass? <laughs> That would no, be no, so... About that. Think about that no, 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 but That's like, completely different. Yeah, but no, 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 I'm not talking about the size. That would involve people like, walking around with Oculus I'm talking like they'll, they'll take that basic technology and then they'll miniaturize it and turn it into that. Okay, here's my question. Is Google Glass even still a big deal? I feel like that dropped off the face of the planet like almost immediately. It's, well, it's kind of hated right now, but... Second of all, this is, this, is, this is the biggest what the fuck. But then you'll break this is the Google. biggest what the fuck, and Chris should feel the burn of this more than anyone here. John Carmack works for Facebook now. I know. He left id. John Carmack to go work for Facebook. Left id to work for Facebook. And essentially. I'm, John I'm, Carmack is an employee of Facebook. And How I don't you, think he'll be around there much longer it, if they pull Facebook I bullshit. I feel like with this I feel like he is going to be like, um, I'm slowly going to back away and go beg for id to give me my job back. That's why I'm saying. Here's your doom news. Facebook doom. Dun, dun, dun. Like like Doom Social or something. Yeah, Doom Social. Well, we already have Doom. Doom RPG. Social. Hey, that's Doom, cool. that's do, good. I here's the, really here's good. the news. Yeah. Like, Doom Four is like, actually a Facebook game. Like, get ten more people to like this page, and we'll give you a clip of ammo or something. <laughs> like. I don't have a sharp enough object to throw in your direction good. right now, Nick. I would eject you from this podcast. Um. Anyways. So that's unfortunate. How much and was weird. the original Oculus Rift Kickstarter? It's three ninety nine. No, no. How much? What did they make? <laughs> three hundred ninety nine dollars. I have no idea. They made one it was million. like it was like what eight million or something like that. If that, it wasn't like this huge fucking thing. I mean, two billion dollars. Facebook, they they've got big plans for this thing because. Oculus by itself isn't this. People like, are in chat are starting to name off what they're going to call the new Facebook Doom game. Face Doom, Farm Doom, Bio Doom, this Candy Crush re- Doom. This is a repeat of the last time I was on in which we just started talking about Doom. What was that conversation where people were just naming things in chat? It was hilarious. Oh, we were just yeah, talking about the latest Doom rumors and people started you know, naming the show certain things with Doom. That's in the right. Name. Mm-hmm. That is true. Which was, was great, great, by the way. That was great. <laughs> that was great. Anyways, moving on. Um, here's a bit, little piece of news. So um, it's almost, it's pretty much confirmed, not really confirmed yet, but it's looking pretty likely that Far Cry 4 is coming next year and it's going to be taking place in the Himalayas. I want to know what y'all think about that. You're going to be able to ride elephants apparently. Elephants. That's the that, only important thing. I think that could be really interesting. Is there going to be a is that going to be a big focus on verticality now? Cuz I it, I think it's based on a mountain range. You think so, Yeah, right? but that's not the kind of verticality we're used to. Well, uh, it's it's a question of where in the Himalayas this takes place because if it's the, if it's against the Indian subcontinent, you also have the possibility of diverse environments where you got the mountains in the north and then you have like the Indian jungle. Well, they would need to have both because I, I can't imagine a Far Cry game taking entirely on a mountainside. On one mountain. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like the game is has this constant. It's like it's it's linear in the fact that you can only go down the roads that are that are etched into the side of this mountain. <laughs> you can't. You can't just run yeah. up the side. Of the yeah. Mountain. So it's no, gonna I mean, have to be. I, I mean, Mad Max is set entirely in a desert. So yeah, but there's but deserts open. A, a mountain is very vertical. A mountain may be very open. We don't know. It's hard. Yeah. And to me, it screams it's gonna have to, it's gonna take place in the Himalayas, and that it's gonna have these mountainous environments. But there's also gonna be that jungle environment, maybe at the base of the mountain. That, so I don't know. I think it sounds cool. I want to ride an elephant. I well, liked Far Cry they, Three a they lot. They made special mention of the fact that you'll be able to ride an elephant, so that gets me wondering like how integral that's gonna be to the gameplay. Just experience. because I'm thinking like, is people... the elephant gonna be like your partner or something? Could you use him in different ways? Could he like wrap his trunk around your waist and lift you up to get a higher like sniper advantage? <laughs> it's it's like Titanfall, where like... the Titanfall, you know, the Titan yeah. throws you. It's like back. Titanfall, except it's an elephant back. instead of a giant robot. Yeah. Why? Why weren't we making this game? Like we we could start on this right now. We should do this. Yes. You know, there are places in this world where people just ride elephants to get around, right? Yeah. Shoo, shut your fucking That sounds mouth. cool. That sounds awesome. Like in the Himalayas. I tell you what, what they need to do <laughs> is they need to bring back the buddy system from Far Cry 2, and then instead of a buddy, you call in a fucking Yeti. What? Yeti's on. You have Wait, a pissed no, 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 off no. Yeti that comes okay, in, maybe, rescues you, and mauls maybe, everybody. Okay, that, that's probably not going to happen, because that's silly. But... Uh, uh, 
Uh, Rex. Far Cry had a really cool hunting system last time around. Do you think you're going to be able to hunt yetis? Yes. No. I think I'm just hopeful that, that there's yetis in there. Anyway. This, this, these games, they need a little bit more mysticism to them. I mean, you know, Far Cry 3, they experimented with, you know, hallucinogens, but that was really only a you story You played based. Blood Dragon, right? I didn't get around to it, no. What? But I know I saw plenty of footage. Believe me, I was editing the top 10 videos, remember? Yeah, that, that came up a couple times. That only times. appeared on two people's lists. Yeah, but still enough, then I had to deal with it. Also, but it doesn't really I'm just count. saying, you know, if if we couldn't get dinosaurs in the last Far Cry 3, like the like the official dinosaurs, can we at least have yetis in this new one? What is with your obsession with yetis? Yetis are What are cool, cool about yetis? I mean, they're like big feet, man, but they're Big white. feet. <laughs> but they're white. All right, you know, maybe. And snowy. Maybe. Also in the news. Alpacas. Disney bought PewDiePie. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's true. Are you serious? It's fucking true. Like bought him what? as a person? They they bought like the YouTube <laughs> fucking. Did they lock him up in a dungeon in Cinderella's <laughs> castle? Like, he's, they, he's you're a, you're streaming one. Disney Infinity from now on, PewDiePie. Oh, Disney bought the YouTube, I guess, partner or whatever that that PewDiePie and some other major like oh. YouTubers are a part of. So mm. now, I guess PewDiePie gets his paycheck. Oh, from Disney? that was right. I heard about that story. It's like for five hundred million dollars, something like that. Yo, fuck Disney, man. They laid off like seven hundred. No, they laid off fucking fuck. seven hundred developers just a couple of weeks ago. You know because they don't want to make video games clearly, and now they want they're going to hire YouTube personalities who fuck play video Disney. games. Yeah, just there is a little irony there, but still. Oh man, <sighs> seriously, what the fuck? Disney presents all... PewDiePie. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds weird. All, all it's going to be like for the first two months is going to be like top ten lists of. Top 10 Disney princesses. Top 10 locations in which no. Disney movies happen. As delivered by PewDiePie? I'm sure. As delivered by PewDiePie. I'm sure PewDiePie has more and integrity company. than that. Oh, God. Yeah, Pewdie more integrity. Oh, God. Top Locked 10. username says PewDiePie in the next Kingdom Hearts game. I will not play Kingdom Hearts 3 if that happens. Oh, that's, I will not play Kingdom Hearts that's 3. That's a terrifying thought. Especially if they stylize him like they did for the Final Fantasy characters. No. No, he's not going to be in the game. But he'll definitely be doing... Be like Waka, but even more annoying. Playthroughs. It's or Pootie like, Pie, so he's just going to shift over to Disney princess rape jokes. <laughs> Fuck Pootie Pie. <laughs> Shots fired. Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I name the show the Fuck Pootie Pie show, it'll be one of our most downloaded shows ever. <laughs> oh god, the YouTube video. Oh god. That'd be interesting. I'm actually... Fuck Cheapy D and Fuck Pootie Pie. <laughs> Suck it long. Suck, Suck it hard. But Angry oh. Joe's all right. <laughs> Angry Joe's all right because he's here in Austin. Is oh. he? Yeah. He lives in East Austin. Hmm. I think. Oh, man. What does that mean? Huh? What? what? Why, is that, why does Brad said to Chris Davis like four times with the show is, what does that mean? No, what does that mean? Fuck Angry Joe's well, that, Hispanic, your... so he's on the east side now? What? What? <laughs> what the fuck was that? You don't know where he lives? <laughs> Uh -huh. Chris has been over oh to his god. house for a barbecue before. Oh my god. Chris he still Davis. has the directions in we, Google we like Maps. To, we like to keep things classy here. Bullshit. We don't approve of Pootie Pie we, bullshit. You do we, racist, sexist jokes about your girlfriend all the time. We, what? Don't give me that shit. We do, do I do that? You did one like three shows ago. You said something really terrible about Malia. We do like to keep it classy when we can. <laughs> When have I ever said anything bad about my girlfriend? Oh my god. Okay, nope, chat. Nope. Pull oh, it up. Oh man, this is Nope. Yeah, please pull it up. There's gonna be a whole index. <laughs> and I mean, then Chris goes like, oh no, I wait, would that's not what be I surprised. Remember the, the old wiki? I wouldn't be surprised if somebody made a page in there listing every single incident that happened. I don't think that And across three hundred and fifty six shows, I let's put Brad on trial right here. Let's do yes. it. <laughs> what else happened in the news? Um Well, I I've got a little piece we can talk about. Okay. It's a... Wait, is this, is this the thing that's going to make me have to change my pants? Yes. So shift your body in a position that's most comfortable in your chair because get ready. I'm going to blow your goddamn mind. Okay. Blow your bowels out your butthole. <laughs> there is a game. It's called The Stomping Land. It was a Kickstarter project about this time last year. It is a open world survival game that's basically Daisy with dinosaurs. Wow. 
Okay. Wait, we, t- we talked about this once. We did a very long time ago when the project was first announced. This past week, they had a huge update talking about the gameplay mechanics, how everything's going to work out. And it sounds goddamn amazing. Especially since they've got video proof at most of this. So, so it, it's being funded right now. It's it's already funded. In fact, it got like five times its its in its initial asking price was was like twenty five thousand. It got like one hundred fourteen thousand. Okay, which is nuts. But it's, it's a it's a small indie project with a few guys. The idea is it's Daisy with dinosaurs. You are a a tribal nomadic hunter on this island out in the middle of the ocean, and it's filled to the brim with dinosaurs, like fifteen different species. The idea is that you just 15. (laughs) Well, that's that they've added in for now. Who knows? Not only is that bullshit, it's unrealistic. (laughs) Unless it's Jurassic Park. But anyway, so the idea is that you're nomadic hunter. You have to survive as long as you can. The longer you survive, the more abilities you get. So you have to set up camp. You have to hunt dinosaurs for meat in order to live off them. Okay, you can. There's a whole ecology system based around di- dinosaurs fighting each other, and the catch is... I remember this video. There was, like, a naked man running through a forest while these two T-Rexes fought or something, right? Yes. What? That was very early. It's, it's come a long way. They've, they've given the man clothes now at this point. Uh-huh. Well, no, they, they've actually... that That's one of the things they updated. So they've got a whole new... Very interesting camouflage system. Why are in. people telling me I have a boner? Oh, I think it's your well, hoodie. It's, it looks like a big zipper. I think it's in, just in the contour about, of a of a phallus. I, I so, think it's because you're talking about dinosaurs. And they're making there, a joke. There's oh, a yeah. camouflage system in the game that is completely user controlled. It's not like set skins of leaves and everything. You pick leaves in the environment. You can go into your character editor and place the leaves at angles on positions of your body well, whenever you save. Using sticky tape. <laughs> I'm just saying. Wow. Just using using did, tree sap. Did you really just take that back to the alone in the dark <laughs> joke from like six years ago or something? Tape. I'm just saying. It sounds like sticky nice, So you can but... create fully customizable, you know, camouflage patterns to evade dinosaurs and other hunters because it's got that PvP element where you have to deal with other hunters in the world. Uh, the way you interact with dinosaurs is interesting because you can actually tame them and, wait for it, ride them. You can ride dinosaurs. This sounded like the realistic, most ex- and now, now the, sounds... the longer the longer you survive in the game, the more your experience goes up with survival, and that allows you to tame larger and larger dinosaurs. You could even tame a T Rex if you survive like an insane amount of time. But wait, Brad has a point. This started out sounding very much like a sim, like trying to survive. In it's a world. got sim elements, so you don't. You would never be able to ride a T Rex. Do you I'm sorry. do you saddle the dinosaur first, or is it just bareback <laughs> you, you fucking should, dinosaur riding? Well, it's bareback. That would really, that would but really it's got some cool can I, can I ride a Stegosaurus? Yes. Ouch. You can ride a Stegosaurus. One of the first mounts you can get is a Gallimimus. Wait a minute. Are you saying that Stegosaurus? So what you do is, is you. And T Rexes are in the same. I can ride a Gallimimus. Which... So, so there's there's two ways to tame, tame a dinosaur. You can either mm. find a hurt dinosaur and heal it, or you can rope a dinosaur, capture it. Rope a dinosaur. Wait, wait, then, like a rodeo? Like, yeah, yeah, like actually, a kind of like that. Yeah. And... <laughs> then and then you go give it food. You bring yeah. it back and feed it to them, and they'll become tame. This this okay this <laughs> dinosaurs wait, wait, this become. Started... This started so tame. Two questions, and they are related. First question, is this online a la Daisy? Are yes. there other people in the game? Okay, yes. question two, when you're saying, like, feed this dinosaur to tame it, like, can you just, like, feed it other players? <laughs> can you just, like, go Fair. find a noob out in the world and be like, hey, come here, well, I got a base, it. I'm gonna give you some food, come here, and then you bring it to, like, your injured T-Rex, and you're and they're like, oh, but that's just a dinosaur, and you, like, shove them in its mouth, <laughs> and it, like, eats them? If that it doesn't cool, have right? that, this game's bullshit. Right? <laughs> Well, they've only demonstrated it actually with fish. Also, but I don't fish. see how that's not possible. Can you bareback a pterodactyl? Wait, wait. They wait. haven't shown any flying dinosaurs. <laughs> Barabactyl. <laughs> wait, don't wait. say can you bareback a pterodactyl because that doesn't necessarily happen. Can you mount a pterodactyl? <laughs> <laughs> that's not much better. I they, I haven't seen any pterodactyls, so I haven't done. Can you ride a pterodactyl without a saddle? With your dick. Well, I don't know, again, if there are pterodactyls in there or not. I mean, it's I've only seen, like, the ground species. But they do some interesting things. So, for example, how you locate dinosaurs in the world, especially the larger species... Is you look for them with your eyes. 
because they're large. So you're that would be in, at yeah. night. It's, you're a travel hunter. You don't really have a grasp all that much beyond just fire and campfires and stuff. But if you look up at the sky and you, you watch the stars, bright stars in the sky correspond to the locations of larger species. Why? And if stars... because it's realistic. <laughs> Shut up! <the>, would you? <laughs> God damn it! Yeah, the God, dinosaur God. sim. So when two stars are close <sighs> to each other or touching each other, there's a possibility that there's a fight going on, and if that means a predator <gasps> is attacking a a just a, a whatever another dinosaur and kills it. That's a resource for meat you can that go to. That is so weird. This is the weirdest system I've ever heard. I, hey, there, I can confirm that back in the day, dinosaurs did have correlating stars in the sky in the night sky. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm, I'm talking about an interesting fucking system. I didn't say it was a... Did I, did I say it was a sim? It if started I did, I out, apologize. It started out as Daisy with dinosaurs. Okay. Now the yeah, I never little dipper is the fucking dinosaur bukkake. <laughs> there are there are built-in safe zones in the game based around uh, locations on the map as well as certain dinosaurs. There's a there's a large brachiosaurus esque creature called the Puertosaurus. You go near it, no other dinosaurs will go near it. It's because it'll step on them, it'll crush them. It's it's like a fucking brachiosaurus, okay? It's a safe zone. It's good for leading dinosaurs away, especially predators that you have to evade. Are there triceratops in this game? Yes. Uh, I'm done. Yeah, fuck triceratops. Those... That stupid fucking bitch from The Land Before Time. Sarah. Yeah, I hate <laughs> fucking Sarah. Wait, didn't they didn't they just discover that triceratops didn't exist? What? No. No. Yeah. They, they 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 called off the name Triceratops, but then they brought it back to, based on they just replaced another dinosaur's name. Oh, they were like, well, okay, Triceratops doesn't exist, but uh, oh, we found a new one. That uh, Triceratops? Yeah, Triceratops is back. Woo! That's like if we found a new planet in the solar system and named it Pluto, and we're like, Pluto's a planet again. We did it, guys. That's bullshit. I need science. <laughs> one last question. Okay. Can I slip? My erect penis <laughs> <laughs> into the asshole of a pterodactyl. I asked you this twice already. <laughs> well, I'm going to say once again, number one, I cannot confirm whether there are pterodactyls in this game or not. But beside that point... I don't see why not. Do pterodactyls That may be how you mount certain creatures well, and stay on. Well, we don't know specifically if you can do that, but we do know that there is a fully fleshed out dick physics system, and the dinosaurs do have, fully rendered, it. Do have fully rendered assholes, so, I mean, you do the math. I mean, this is pretty much roast with dinosaurs, I'm just saying. I mean, I, I shouldn't have to say much more than Daisy with dinosaurs, you okay. know. Well, you apparently did, because what you painted after you said Daisy with dinosaurs was not what I had pictured in my head. I'm just saying. Don't get me wrong. I would like to ride a dinosaur. There's a whole crafting system in the game. There's there's a whole weather and night there's cycle a whole... system. There's there's AI for like every single species of dinosaur. They're, they're not stupid creatures. Okay. They, they will I'm actively not, hunt down the player. I, I don't get me wrong. I will play this. So if you see a raptor, you're already dead. There's a distinct possibility thereof. Gotcha. Well, that certainly catapults it into a conversation I wasn't expecting to have. It, it's a game that's it's it's not out yet. It was supposed to have its playable alpha right now, but they had to delay it. They think this summer, as far as I can tell. Uh, and. New release not, Tuesday, doing, right there. I'm not doing this game justice. I'm, I'm telling you, you got to look at this game. It's, it's got some really interesting features. Okay. Well, I'm not writing it off. What, what I'm just saying, there, the there were, land. there were details that came to light during this conversation that were fun to joke about, <laughs> <laughs> which we did. But we'll, we'll check it out. I'm sure that that'll be fun for a new release Tuesday in the future. Faux show. Anyways. Anything else <clears throat> y'all wanna y'all wanna bring up in the news, or should we? Uh... Wait, you said there. Were... Oh wait, we talked about Project Morpheus last week. The, uh, the we some... did. I guess. Was there something specific you wanted to you wanted to I, add I to that just conversation? I didn't remember or... us talking about it. I will say that um, this Oculus Rift going to Facebook thing um, is probably good for Project Morpheus. Oh, for Project mm. Morpheus. Yeah, yes. kind of opens up a lot of. Yeah. So Sony's cracking open the the bottles of wine. Tonight. Yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, they're like fuck, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So. Facebook. 
Yeah, I, I, I would have thought it would have been, you know. What if Project Morpheus gets bought out by, like, Twitter? No. <laughs> it's a Sony product. Yeah, I mean, right Google Plus. MySpace. So the what dis- if MySpace buys? Oh, my God. I saw the fucking tweet saying, like, MySpace bought Viewfinder. The, the fucking things that you oh look like at. A, like an actual cameras? viewfinder? No, the what? viewfinder where you put the little circle things in and you look at the scenes and oh, the Oh, yeah, the, the 3D, the viewfinder. Where it's like, oh my god, I'm in Paris and now I'm in Germany. Wait, those things still exist? The new... It's a joke. Because oh. MySpace, they have no... Oculus. Yeah. Nobody, okay. they have that, no that, that's the level of capital at which they can invest. Okay. Is a viewfinder instead of Oculus. It was... <laughs> just what clean my hands of it yeah, the, move on. the only thing that really disappoints me about morpheus if i may say so is that it's a it's, sony it, it's it's sony exclusive it's only ps4 well that's because huh? i'm just saying i would like this to go you know open platform well, that's like well. that's like that's like me saying i'm really disappointed that connect is only a microsoft so no you're not. that's a whole <laughs> but i mean like i'm really not disappointed but that would it's basically the same thing as me saying that. I'm just saying I'd like some competition, you know, between systems on what VR system I want to use. Well, if I were to get one, I, I feel like Microsoft kind of set themselves up with Connect as being their. That's not VR, but no. I don't know. Maybe who knows? Well, I'm not. I'm not saying specifically fucking Xbox. I'm saying PC and and whatever has a fucking HDMI port. I'd like to be able to do that. We. Oh, we are troopers. We are. I'm sorry. V. Wait. Troopers. We are, three. We are troopers. Go three. three. Go virtual reality troopers. Three. Three. Go. What is <laughs> wrong with you people today? Anyways, we are VR troopers. So we're gonna. Do, are you ready to do community? I no one made it for me. So I'm trusting go. you with this community segment. This the community. Okay. But before we do that, um, well. Before you do chatter for the week and whatnot, let's wrap things up with the four player. <laughs> <laughs> um, quick reminder: uh, PAX is in what? Just over two weeks, a little oh over two God. weeks. Yeah. So yes, yeah. we're two weeks from this. We Friday. are going to be in Boston on the tenth through the what is it? Eleventh, twelfth? No, thirteenth. Well, you tenth to the thirteenth. Math. Tenth through the thirteenth. We will be in Boston for PAX East. Um, that, by the way, that's news. I don't. I forgot to mention that there are a lot of big companies this year that are not going to PAX East. What's up? With Did you that? see that Nintendo's list? Nintendo's out. Well, Nintendo's out. Sony's out. Capcom's out. Deep Silver's out. Sega is out. Deep Silver's out. All of those. Com- really? There's more on that list, but those are the five big ones that stood out to me. What's up with that? I mean, J- Japan never had much of a presence there, with the exception of Nintendo, anyways. But you know, still, that's surprising. Ubisoft is going. They've said, and they've released a list of games there. Not Watch Dogs, but they haven't. No, Watch Do- Watch Dogs is there, but they haven't said specifically whether it's hands off or hands on. It, it better not, be dude, hands on. Where it is better be the hands poop on. with that game? I'm telling you, what is going on? Joseph was right. He should become president. Joseph. That's dangerous. I mean, Joseph was right about him. Dem- didn't matter what Joseph you're president had of. sneaking suspicions about the quality of Watch Dogs a long time and ago. Apparently, he thinks that that makes him like is like is Bethesda? a messiah. Yeah, <laughs> an oracle of this he, game that got delayed. I don't know about it. Is is Zenimax going to be there? Uh, I did not see Zenimax or Bethesda on the list of games. Not a company is not attending. Okay, so I would assume they will be there. Th- that that means they probably have an updated build of Wa- Wolfenstein. You and the, go play maybe it. the evil within. Well. I don't think the evil within will be playable. But yeah, man, fucking evil it's within. It's coming out in August. Fuck yes, dude. Yeah. No, I, I, I August, man. No, it's got to be playable at E3. It's got to be. It was originally going to be, be June, so I bet. Mm-hmm. Let's be not forget. Playable. I bet it'll be PAX playable. East is very indie focused. It is. It, it's there will be a lot of indie games from there. Word on the streets is there's going to be no good indie games at PAX East. Well, hey, hold, hold on, hold on. Now. Wait, what? We, we do on. know about one we, hey, we hey, can't mention, hey, no, but we do, know. we do know about another. I got but a press release today it. from Will Briarly, who says that Soda Drinker Pro, the next version oh, of it, is going to be available to Are play. Yes, <gasps> with an updated version of Vivian Clark as well. So, hey. Oh, wow. Did he add some new... Well, never mind. I... Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Let's not get into the conversation about Soda Drinker Pro. Because man, yeah, you got a the conversation. conversation. It's great. Anyway. Oh, it's fantastic! I love it. I'm gonna go play it. 
Um, no, anyway, its point is, PAX East is very indie focused. There will be a lot of indie games there. We will be there. It's going to be fun. So we have a post on the site. If you haven't yet, if you're planning on going, we would like to know that you're going. So please drop by the forum, check in, just let us know you're going to be there. If you want to come hang out, you're welcome to. If you have ideas for what we might do, you're welcome to. Last year, we ended up um, holding a live podcast recording in one of the um, spaces up in, in the convention hall. Um, so we would love to do that again if we can make it happen. It was a lot of fun. Um, but cool. yeah, we just want to know who's going, who's not. A lot of people have already RSVP'd, but if you have not yet and you're planning on going, drop in the forums let us know. If someone in chat could actually post the link to either the post or the and on the front page of the site or the forum post, that would be wonderful. If you want hands-on with the game, new game from next... It's not fucking a secret! He's been... It's not... Yes, it kind of is. They haven't officially announced it, so they can't confirm it except well, to he's, us. He's been tweeting about it, so it's not that secret. <laughs> I'm going to plug my ears because I don't want to hear. All right. Well, I'm going to let you well, say that then. Well, I would like to ask Nick <laughs> who at 4Player is going to PAX East. That'd be myself, Crispy, yeah. Jeff, Zach. No land. No one. I always forget you one always person. Forget no. Last week. How can you forget your roommate? I just, last week I forgot Zach. This week I forgot no one. It, we, ha, we have five people going. It's going to be a big group. Yeah, Zach is going to fill in my place as camera bitch, so. Yes. It's gonna, okay, I see it. I'm just going based on what Bob told me, so. Well, he's, it's public knowledge that. They were saying in a chat that he already mentioned it. All right, all right, go for it. If you're, if you're going to be a PAX, you'll have a chance to play Tetropolis, which is the game from oh. Next Gen Pants. Are we allowed to say that? <laughs> Apparently we are, according to Brad. It's so. public knowledge. I don't understand why we wouldn't be able to mention it. <laughs> I read about it on Kotaku. No, it was Joystick. No. Joystick. That actually got featured in Joystick, so. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I read that already. So they just got back from GDC. Apparently that went really well. They're excited about it. So if you're going to PAX, they stop by. Play fucking Tetropolis. They came Bob. back with yeah. like three whole pages of just notes from various developers giving them advice and stuff. Yeah. So it's going good for those guys. So we're very proud of them. It will be fun. Um, so please stop by and do that. And there will be a ton of other indie games there that are worth playing. We, we discovered some pretty awesome games last year at PAX East um, just because there was such a big focus on indie titles. So you, you really jumped on Contrast. I did jump on Contrast. That's where I discovered it. That's where I personally was first introduced to Outlast, um, which I ended up loving. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of cool indie stuff there. So it'll be fun to see what they have going on this year. Um, and now, now, Chris Davis is in our new chatter for the week. Chatter for the week. It's time for community. Oh, God. Do your sing thing. Thank you. Are you gonna go? I'm, I'm, I'm playing. I'm, I'm waiting for you, bro. This is, this is waiting music. Well, this it's time for chatter of the week, and chatter of the week is the segment in which we pit two chatters against one another in an all-out brawl of chatterness to determine. Who we love more. I think the word is chattyality. Chattyality? Yeah. Hmm. Y'all are <laughs> making like words up. Just go. So uh, this week we have <laughs> two people as per usual. Our first contestant is, uh, name and chat is So Knife. Uh, it specifically says his gender is a dude. <laughs> Wait, So Knife? So Knife? Gender. Yes. A dude. How do you S spell that? S O Knife. K N I F E. Okay. So Knife. Yeah. His shameful secret. Kingdom Hearts on the Game Boy Advance was one of my was my favorite handheld game. And I've beaten twice and I beat it twice in primary school. <laughs> Brad's already is like, he loses. <laughs> I'm sorry. In the game you use car attacks, and when your deck ran out, you could hold A to recharge your deck. However, I didn't read that part of the tutorial. And when it, the prompt to press A came up, I instinctively thought I had to mash A. Fortunately, the rate at which I recharged was faster and the rate uh, the recharge decayed. Uh, so so then throughout the entire two playthroughs of the game, I would mash A like crazy and would wonder why on earth my character was spazzing out between animations. Years later in high school, I decided to revisit the game in class as I was bored. 
And somehow, some way, during the first battle when I ran out of cards, I had to recharge my deck. I held down A, as you should, instead of mashing it, and recharged my deck ten times faster. I was in such awe of my stupidity that I said out loud in class, Wait, what? I could not stop laughing inside <laughs> as my teacher told me uh, told me to speak to her in for after class. So he got in trouble. Mm -mm. Oh man, shame, shame, shame. He's a shitty student playing his fucking Game Boy. She's like, she's like in class, anyways. Now, now to be fair, wait, wait, do you know this person's name? Like uh, the real name? So knife. Uh, so, no, it, it doesn't listen. Okay, his real name. so his teacher calls him up. She's like, okay, so knife. So knife. <laughs> yeah, I have to talk to you about the games you're choosing to play in my class. Why are you playing Kingdom Hearts in the Game exactly. Boy? Yeah. <laughs> have you heard of Advance Wars? What's, so knife. Now, what's going to, on at to home? be fair, okay. teacher was Brad, by the way. You remember, remember Michael, right? The the guy we knew in high school. Oh yes, the game developer. Yes, yeah. So we we had a coach for our English class our senior year. Mm -hmm. So we both had Game Boy Advances and copies of Street Fighter Alpha yes. Two. So we had the Connect cable and we would mill the class oh, while he's teaching, and he didn't give a shit because we were doing just fine in the class. We were playing Street Fighter against each other right in front of everybody. Oh man, Fucking it was great to have a coach, no yeah. matter what class you had. Truth. I had four of them my senior year. You got damn. I'm still. Hey, wait, it's great to have a coach because he doesn't give a shit about your grades unless you're on his team. Pretty much. <laughs> when Fair I was enough. in school, I played Atari. Brad's you're not that old. Brad is old. All right, continue anyway, on. His greatest gaming achievement, quote, master. Oh wait, actually, this is this is something pretty impressive. Mastering the helicopter in Battlefield Three. Oh, shit. Yeah. Aircraft and Battlefield are one of those things that you love to hate when it kills you and love to hate as well when you pilot it. You hate it even more when you see these skilled pilots flying exceptionally low, ducking under bridges and whatnot. However, after hours and hours flying with my friend, we finally both mastered the art. Even better, the skill carried through to the sequel, Battlefield 4, giving us an early lead in the new game. So That's, yeah, that's, that's impressive. He must have been that guy that was flying around the helicopter in your review when you were recording footage, like inside that building. <laughs> in the helicopter. I'm just like, what is this guy doing in this building? Why is he flying around in here? Is this how you do it? Yeah. <laughs> well, well the, the great thing. How do I helicopter? <laughs> <laughs> well, the great thing about the helicopter, specifically in Battlefield 4, is that they introduced a tutorial level. So you could fly any vehicle anytime you want and just learn how to play with it. So, it, so. The, Learning how to do it just on the fly in Battlefield 3, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Can no. you I, I have never once successfully piloted a helicopter or plane in Battlefield. Can you yes. fly a tank? <laughs> no. <laughs> now that's an accomplishment. In GTA 3, you could. You can get a boat to fly, actually. What? Yeah. With enough C4, you can make it go fly. <laughs> I'm serious. You haven't seen any of, like, Birger Paul's videos? That uh, was GTA 4. <clears throat> no. This is Battlefield. Anyway. His top five games of all time. Number five. Minecraft. Number four, Mount and Blade. Mount and Blade. Number three, Battlefield 3. Number two, Assassin's Creed. Uh, two. Well, we know it's it should not be three. two. I'm going to go with Brotherhood. I'm probably going to go with two. Most people it put should two, be two as their favorite. Brotherhood. Mm, uh, Brotherhood is that. the best. It's not the best, but I can see that. And is the best. his number one game of all time, Fallout 3. 3. New Vegas. Three. Mm. I just mm. went New Vegas. It's a good list. I like that three. list. Point look at it. He, 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 he named the correct Assassin's Creed. Mm. Has anyone ever put Fallout Brotherhood of Steel? That was their favorite Fallout game. <laughs> that that so. was the isometric, you know, hack yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. That was not good. It was. It was <laughs> fucking terrible. <laughs> that, that was actually my introduction to the Fallout series. Really? And so, oh, yeah. Man. That was, it was not good. How did good. you keep going? All right. I, I fully forgot about late until years later when Fallout 3 came out. So. Okay. Anyway. Who is So Knife up against? All right. So Knife is up against <clears throat> Alex L. from Connecticut. His chat name is Gil Martin. I've never... uh, Gil Martin. I love that guy. <laughs> Paul Gil Martin? <laughs> I don't think he does. Pretty decent comedian. We had a lot of good times. Is that some comedian from like the oh, 40s? Yeah. No, Gil he's Martin? a comedian from, you know, like 10 years ago. Okay. He had a great poem called uh, Undignified Ways to Die. Oh, Google that. It's, Wait, it's, it's pretty damn funny. Paul Gil Martin. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, Alex, his shameful secret. Quote, when I was younger, I lived across the street for one of my best friends. One day we were playing Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, the 1998 version. 
I'm not into on, incest, on his computer, but... and his mom came to tell us that there was that was enough video games for the day, and we should do something else. And I'm not into incest, but. <laughs> <laughs> so we murdered her just like <laughs> well just like that one kate winslet movie well video games were all we were really interested in doing with him <clears throat> so i almost immediately said i had to go home <laughs> fuck this i'm getting out of here <laughs> yeah no fuck physical exercise let's just go i'm I'll, yeah. I'll go home and play video games fuck it. the next day he was pretty upset after because he thought that all i cared about was the game and not him Oh my god. Wait, okay. let's hear it. Oh god, this is not good. Oh god. Nolan, I swear to god, princess. you added this, didn't you? <laughs> god damn it, Nolan. I'm not into princess. He added but... a, he added a line in here that I do not approve of, but I will say what it anyway. It say? Because I'm a good person and a good host. Read it. <laughs> I'm not into incest, but this one time when Chris Davis was touching my butthole. No! Oh, <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Good job, Nolan. God, Good job. Just fuck trolling you, Nolan. Us from, he's trolling us from home. From yeah, the grave. <laughs> from beyond the grave. Oh, I said it anyway. Anyway. Get to work, Nolan. His mom also gave me the stick, the stink eye, but I made up some story about hearing my mom calling from across the street. What can I say? He was a nice guy, but that particular afternoon I was only interested in one thing, and it wasn't his company. Still pretty dickish of me, though. Also, I once put 80 hours into Valkyria Chronicles 2. That was a dark year. That seems like a lot. It's a really long game. Isn't no. that long? Yeah, it's a long His long. greatest gaming achievement. For my final year of uni university i wrote my honors dissertation for arts of history on an examination of bioshocks act objectionist and phenomenological he's making a words <laughs> phenomenological 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 there you go words yay themes and how they inform each other the gameplay visuals and story i got a first on it basically an a that was pretty awesome. A first? What the hell is a first? Evidently, that's an A. Where's first. this person from? Uh, it says Connecticut, but that sounds like <laughs> Connecticut. England or something. Connecticut, sure. Okay. First. Okay. <laughs> also, I quote, I assume you're familiar with objectivism if you played Bioshock, but phen phenomenology is a philosophical approach which considers the phenomena or experience of living, the way humans sense and understand their world through their senses, perception, and bodily awareness. You can imagine a theme like this is an interesting way to look at FPS. At least I think it is. Yes, that sounds very interesting i i'm very aware of my bodily awareness <laughs> <laughs> you know i'm just gonna leave it at that okay here we go his top five games of all time number five star wars uh battlefront of 2. the old republic oh no don't tell me jedi knight jedi outcast Knights no of the jedi old academy republic. shadows of the empire uh Knights star wars the old republic star wars dark forces 2 jedi knight star wars dark forces <laughs> okay stop star wars <laughs> racer Star Wars Racer 2? <laughs> Bombad Racer? I, wait, Bombad Masters or... of the Terrace Kasi, or whatever that was called. Really? It's KOTOR. I'm so proud of him. TIE Fighter. Oh! X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter? No, TIE Just Fighter. Just TIE Fighter. Just TIE Fighter. That is really, that's a damn good game if y'all ever got to play it. You can't even play those anymore. I know, I know, but it was amazing. I've, to... I've heard good things. I have never played it myself. I, I got it, have... but I can't. No, I have X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter. Yeah, this is an interesting list. Number four, Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward. Oh, I for have the never DS? even heard of that game. That's, that was the sequel to 9999. Came yeah. out last year. 99999. Yeah, it's interesting. Number three, Fallout New Vegas and all add-ons, especially Dead Money and Old World Blues. I heard Wait, good what? things. Fallout New Vegas, oh, including yeah. all of the expansions. Dead Money and Old yeah. World Blues. Oh, uh, number two, Portal. One. It better be Portal. Portal. I mean, I personally liked oh, Portal 2 a lot. He's still so, alive. You know what? I'll say Portal 2. He's, Portal's he's still alive. He says Portal 2. People like wow. Portal 2. That's fine. Portal 2 is a great game. Yes. They're both great games. They're just very different games. I just don't know why Nick said I still liked Portal 2 a lot. What does that mean? Well, you make it sound like it's it's unheard of to say someone liked Portal 2 more than Portal 1. It's crazy. Yeah. It's not crazy. <laughs> and his favorite game of all time 
is Bioshock. Period. Question mark. <laughs> Bioshock. Bioshock. Fill two, in the rest. Two. Bio, Bioshock Two: Minerva's Den. It's impossible for it to be infinite. And if it was Bioshock mm, Two, this would be I don't Zocano. Know. He was talking about his uh, phenomenological. You need to get off your higher world stuff. So it's impossible for it to be in a game. I bet it's Bioshock Infinite. infinite. Sure, why Someone's not? favorite game of all time. I mean, I think it's a little early to be making this that call. Is this guy's favorite game of all time? Yeah. This is this guy's favorite game of all time. Bioshock Infinite? Really? No, it's not. It's just Bioshock. Oh. Of course. God damn it, that was stupid. <laughs> not not the choice, but the build-up. That was, that was... Okay, that was... so we have Sonife, who is specifically a dude, versus Alex L. from Connecticut, who's Gil Martin in chat. I'm going to go... I'm going to go with Sonife. I'm not going with Sonife. One, he played Kingdom Hearts. He, yeah, Kingdom Hearts. Come on, <laughs> Kingdom uh, Hearts on the GBA too. Secondly, 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 this other guy seems cool. Wait a minute, Tie Fighter. Tie Fighter. Yeah, fuck it. I'll give it to that guy. Why not? Alex. Because I had a demo for Tie Fighter back in the day, and it was fun. But I never played the full game, and I always kind of regret oh. that because my favorite part about it was the title screen or like the little menu screen. It looked like the the like Imperial recruiting office, and you're all like, "Oh my god, I get to play a bad guy in this game!" <laughs> oh, it gets better. <laughs> like I never, I never played a game where I got to be the bad guy before. That was titillating. It's so good, man. Especially the expansions. It doubled the game's length. It's so, and it's girth. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah. Because they Sorry, had... I'm really inappropriate. Tonight. So so knife, Alex, Alex. You're the tiebreaker, I guess. I'm gonna have to give it to Alex. Because right. I am really impressed by his edition of TIE Fighter. Fine. Alex, you have impressed us. Congratulations, you are if you want to chatter win, for the week. Put TIE Fighter in your And list. uh you win Well, we can't afford to give you anything, but you win our love for the next ten minutes. <gasps> Just for the next 10 minutes. Okay. Anyways. So if you want to be Chatter of the Week, you can send an email to Nolan Hedstrom at fourplayernetwork.com. Include your name, your 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 chat ID, your shameful secret, your greatest gaming achievement, and your top five games of all time. And you too could be Chatter of the Week. Nolan says the second guy already lost because Chris D touched his butthole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody <laughs> added that in. Oh my god. Oh my god. Maybe uh, maybe it was Alexandria or Alexa? Uh, no. Famous it's... butthole toucher, this Christy. <laughs> All right. JK. JK. That's, well, Chris picked him because he's related to him. What? what? Well, because he says I'm not into incest, but Chris touched my butthole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. Yeah. It's, um... Oh, man. Okay. It's All right. Time. This is time. Okay. Let's go ahead and wrap the show up. We're going to do our four player minute as we always do. We say our hype. What? I said. Oh, our hype, our sweat, our thank you, and our fuck you for the week. Brad starts us off. Before he does that, I just want to remind everybody who's watching at home at 4pp.tv to stick around. After the show, we'll be recording our new release Tuesday for the week, which is going to be the demo of a new survival horror game called Caffeine. Yes. Which should be interesting. I hope. Maybe we're trusting Chris on this. We're one. trust. We're putting off well, faith. This is. I, I've seen some pre-alpha gameplay, and it looked pretty decent. Okay, it looked pretty decent. Quote in fact, unquote. they came out with a video today of the game built in Unreal Four. And it looks pretty. Okay, well then we'll see what happens. Join us for that after the show. Should be fun. I think Brad said he might play some Infamous later tonight. Maybe. Sure. Okay. Cool. So Brad, why don't you start us off with the four-player minute? My gaming hype. Goes to M plus plus. I saw some gameplay play footage coming out of GDC, and they're actually introducing some interesting new mechanics and uh, features that I think look really cool. Like there's like a shadow one. There's like a shadow feature where quickly after you start going through the level, like a shadow follow follows you. That's mimicking your movement, and if you touch it, you both explode and die. So hmm. so when when you're going through a level, you might have to hit a switch and come back, but you got to make sure to avoid your shadow and stuff like that. Seems really cool. They also had these mines that didn't set off the first time you touched them. It, they would just turn red. 
Yeah. And then when you go through it a second time, then they were active mines. So you might you might have had to like go through like like the whole level's filled with these mines, but you might have had to go through more than once. But your second pass, you had to make sure you avoided all the mines that you activated your first pass. Just some really cool new ideas. I'm super excited for M plus plus, even though it's gonna be impossible and I'm gonna be screaming and stuff, but I'm super hyped. It looks really cool. Um my gaming sweat. We didn't talk about it, but Zarl's gifted me a copy of Diablo 3. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Maybe you talk a little bit about it in your four-player match. Yeah, I will. Crispy play, started playing. I think me and Crispy are going to co-op some some Diablo, Diablo 3 together. I that's like yeah. I this guess is so. my, <laughs> like the, y'all are gonna get together and do drugs we're not, together. Yeah, we're not really like happy about it. I'm definitely not happy about it. <laughs> but uh, but I, I I was like Zaros, what the fuck? And 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 he was like, if you don't this, accept it, I will feel this, insulted. This isn't this isn't a choice that I necessarily made. This is just kind of where my body led me. So of course. <sighs> oh man, I don't know when it's gonna happen, but we'll let you know. Um, my thank you for the week goes to Reborn Revolution. For um, oh, for the, for the she sent some uh some sound some like uh oh where are they there there's there there's like a ton of them some felt furniture pads to put on the bottom of my microphone and uh, they actually work quite nicely. Well, we are all tired of the mic rape, no matter what. So luckily, I have a tile floor, so you know they they slide along rather nicely, and my. Fuck you for the week goes to that game, Corpse Party, which is our subscriber of the month game, by the way. And I played some um, yesterday, and that game is bullshit. It is bullshit. You can fuck up on your story and not even know you fucked up until, like, the end of it. When I said, oh, well, you know, you fucking, you fucked up, but you fucked up, like, you know long before you ever got to the ending because you didn't go into one little room that you know you weren't required to go into it's wait which story which one corpse party uh, i'm gonna play more of it on thursday so ah, but fuck that game fuck that game <clears throat> thank F you that brad S. crispy okay <clears throat> hang on <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> anyway <clears throat> <clears throat> Mm. Okay, my hype is. Was it not uh, Reborn Revolution? Maybe I misread. No, the Reborn movie. sent them. Okay, well, do we know? I don't know what they're talking. Well, somebody about. is gonna end up feeling insulted if you name another name. My hype is for PAX East, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. Like we mentioned, I've only been to one PAX before, but I had a blasty blast. It was a wonderful time. I can't wait to go to Boston. Hopefully, there will be even more. Of you guys, community members out there who I haven't met yet, returning friends and favorites. Here's to getting hammered um, four in the morning the night before having to catch a plane. You're 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 just, Dude, you're just that glad was, that that was a horribly wonderful night. You're just glad that you don't have to hear my snoring this time. Uh, it's true. I don't have true. to hear Chris Davis' snoring this time. Oh, yeah. Hopefully that won't be the last time I vomit off of Joseph's balcony. <laughs> my sweat <laughs> is <laughs> As for tomorrow, I'm going to be resuming Final Fantasy Tactics on the feed Woo! at, oh, at oh, 10, 10 30 ish. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. Where are you in that game? I'm, dude, I'm getting ready to go do. Uh, the reason why I'm sweating is because I'm about to go. I, I'm, I think I'm pretty close to that Wygraph fight. Wait, what? Wait, no, no. Or no, whatever the castle fight is. The one no, that's coming no, up. You have plenty of time. Did you already do the execution? No, that's the one I'm working on right now. Oh man, yeah, you you're gonna get through that shit tomorrow night. Okay, it's it's kicking my ass and I hate it, but it's a great game. I just need to I need to do some grinding and and grinding in this game is really grindy, um, but I don't know. We'll we'll get through it. We'll work through it. I told uh, you, my if you're going with the my, game plan. My fuck you for the week goes to Blizzard because now like I'm playing fucking Blizzard games again not just Diablo but I was playing a little bit of World of Warcraft for a minute there I've been playing Hearthstone how long before I'm playing fucking Starcraft again god damn it I thought I was done with this shit and yet here I am getting pulled back in and now I start thinking about playing Diablo 3 and Blizzard's all like oh hey new expansion guess what they added a fucking paladin and I'm like god 
damn it! I love paladins! That's terrible. That's terrible. I hate you, Blizzard. You said you played Diablo 2? I did. Did you ever use do a hammer a hammer dude? Yeah, dude, that was like my favorite character! Fuck, they have hammers now. Like, I know! You okay. know, you know, they uh I found out today that they added a specific item that's really interesting to Reaper Souls. It's called Kool-Aid. And it allows you to smash through walls. <laughs> Infinitely for five oh, seconds. Oh, I get it. Like the Kool-Aid man. I get it. Is that just a joke? Or... That's an actual in-game item. Oh, that's terrible. I that's think that's, that's pretty awesome, actually. Oh, yeah. Chris? No, and my thank oh. you my thank you for the week, because I couldn't think of one by default. Goes to Chris Davis. Thank you for sitting in for Nolan, who was too lazy to show up. Yeah, he was. He was so lazy. He thinks his job's more important than so us. So lazy, yeah. Nolan. So lazy. Mm. You did get a little loud there, Chris. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. This is just, I'm sorry. I I can't explain myself. Is there an item in Diablo three that lets any class teleport? Like, okay. 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 Chris Davis, go. All right. I haven't done one of these in a while, so forgive me. My hype this week has to go to Wolfenstein: The New Order because they released a trailer last week. That showed off some uh, some gameplay Joseph and I had seen previously, mm -hmm. uh, played through differently to a fail state condition. I'd been interested in uh, just how those work out, and this game just keeps looking better. It looks so good. I need this in my life, and it has Doom beta access. So that is true. That, that is, is true. Very important. It's coming out what May, June, uh, May sixteenth, something? something like that. It's coming. May is going to be such a good month, man. Oh, man. March was a fucking good month. Yeah, at least we have a drought in April, so... That is true. We do. My... <clears throat> my sweat? My sweat? Yes. Sweat? My sweat? Uh, my sweat is uh, for Metal Gear Solid, The Fan of Pain. I, there's something I didn't mention before, and I'm kind of kind of annoyed about the possibility of. I am fearful that somehow... Konami's going to shoehorn the entirety of Ground Zeroes into the Phantom Pain. I don't because think so. there is the possibility that narrative disconnect between people who never play Ground Zeroes but want to know what happened, but, you know, to cause Big Boss to it's go like, into that. It's like mean, nine years separate, you yeah. know? It, it's, no, no, but people are going to want to know why the Konami's fuck Konami's never been like... Why do you lose a fucking arm? They've never been super concerned with, you know, making the yeah. their story make sense before. Yeah, yeah especially, they, like, considering how much... But they've like, also never like, really been concerned with just their customers and what they really want. They are one of the biggest problems in downloadable content pricing in Japan. They so, are terrible at but it. But that and I'm totally worried they might goes do that against to your your claim, though. Why would they put that in the game for free when they are selling it? Because they want to make money now and they want to make money later. But wouldn't they make more money if they had to sell it separately? Yeah. Even people who were hyped about, well, especially people... especially if they have like item integration where it's like Playground Zeroes to unlock exclusive items in Phantom Pain. Yeah, why would they just be giving that away? I, I think they would just. Make I think you buy I think, again. I don't think that'll be the case. I think they'll probably do some like previously a Metal Gear Solid type thing at the beginning that explains what happened. Oh God, I hope Kiefer yeah. Sutherland voices it, and it sounds just like the previously on Twenty Four. <laughs> <laughs> which which they're bringing that back like a week after is that, a sh is that <laughs> new 24 a show or is it a movie it, it's a it's a 12 episode miniseries that's not wait, 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 it's wait, not yeah. bound to the 24 Shouldn't narrative there be structure 24 yeah. hours well it i guess it's 12 hours 12 previously on 12 oh god i'm sorry 60 60 to continue uh i guess my thank you for this week that's kind of a hard one. Really? Not Actually, no. I, it's very Grateful simple. Grateful person? I am going to go ahead and thank Overkill Software for providing a new, uh, fresh update to Payday 2 this past week. They uh, gave us a free new heist. They changed a lot of the stealth mechanics and made the game just that much more interesting. So, all for free. We do know you are a big fan of Payday. It's a damn fine game. I'm telling y'all, y'all need to play it. 
One day I will. It's got stats and the whole RPG elements and the whole nine yards. <laughs> we got, I know you got. I know you fellas love stats. You it's like got numbers. Stats. Oh, does I have, know. Does it have damage floaters? Oh, like, Brad. Brad masturbates to damage numbers. So. Is there any swords or magic? <laughs> Brad spells? masturbates and, da- and damage numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've, got, you've got like the getaway driver. You've got the hacker. You've got the enforcer. You've got the mage. Like. Yeah. I'll be the mage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's casting magic spells. And what is your that'll fuck, be the technician. What is your fuck you for the week? <sighs> My fuck you, I think I'm going to give it to Nolan Hedstrom. Because not only did he not have the balls to be on this episode this week, mm-hmm. he also put in a line uh, oh, for the chatter of the week that made quite a bit of fun of me. So Yes. he No one's never going to pass it. I just want you to know, you gave the win to the guy who licked your butthole. <laughs> no, 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 to the guy whose butthole he touched. Yeah, no, but I ha- but he's also so the you're guy biased. who put top five. <laughs> so you're biased. He, you have a butthole bias. Bullshit. 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 All right, yeah. thank you. To look like a tie fighter. All right, so here we go. Here's my four-player minute. I'm going to skip hype this week. You're not I'm just skipping it. So are you going to get a double hype? What the fuck no, no, no. I'm Nick. giving two fucks. No, no, no. Fucks. Nick is hype two about... Two fucks. Two fucks. Nick two is hype fucks. about Supernatural. Ah, uh, my, uh, I my, thought you didn't give two fucks. I'm giving two fucks. He this gives week. two. My fucks. sweat is Dark Souls two because as I approach the end of Infamous, that's kind of the next thing that's dun, dun, on my dun. list here. And like Chris said, we have a drought in April. There's gonna be time to play some Dark Souls, and I'm I'm kind of scared of it. But hey, whatever. We'll see what happens. My thank you for the week goes to Sucker Punch for knowing they were gonna be producing a sequel to one of their games as a basically a launch window title for a new generation of hardware. But making it feel like a full fledged, fleshed out sequel and not like rushed out the door. They put, a, I can, you can tell they put a lot of thought into Infamous when you play it. My fuck you, my first fuck you of the week goes to the Asylum level in Thief. I broadcasted that on Friday. Oh, or Saturday. I was disappointed in you. Because I, yeah, because I fucking skipped your little optional cafeteria sequence. Yeah, cafeteria. But that was a good sequence. Yeah, fuck you. I, I was so. <laughs> i was so paranoid about um that fucking level just because there's been a lot of hype behind you know some of the scary levels in like thief 3 and whatnot so i was like uh this is this might scare the shit out of me and it wasn't that bad but the audio is really well done in this particular level and, and i was wearing the game and i was well, oh. i mean it has it has some audio problems the whole game has audio problems yeah, but does. When the audio is not having any of the problems, it works really well. Localized audio is an issue in that game. Yes, um, but the uh, but you didn't get you didn't get the atmospheric the audio is great, and yeah. it was making me. I was wearing over the I was wearing like big headphones. It made me really nervous, and then of course I came across a part where you're basically in these catacombs being chased by these things, and I don't like being chased. What by what things. you didn't know about that is that they're blind. But they can hear really well. And no, I knew that. I figured that out. I actually. But, but no, no, no. You didn't know that they can also see you when you're using focus mode. Oh, they can detect you. I didn't know that. I was like walking around in focus mode the entire time. <laughs> um, but but you didn't get raped by the robot. What? I don't even know what that means. They're, the the robot ghost that you hid from. Oh, that thing? was a robot ghost? Wait. I don't know what it was, but it sounds like a robot, so I'm calling it a robot ghost. A robot. Yeah, there was Wait, like, like some invisible thing. scared the shit out of me, man. A there was some invisible thing walking around the hall, and you could see like the air get like wavy. And I was like, what the fuck is that? And then I just like stepped aside and hid in a closet, and you see it, you see like the air get all wavy as it walks by the closet. I was like, what the fuck is that? Never but figured it out. Predator. But see, because the because of the problems with the localized audio in that game, I knew it was in the area. I didn't realize it was sneaking up behind me. So I'm just walking along trying to hide from it, wondering where it is. All of a sudden, my character gets stabbed in the back, and he falls over. So it can kill you. Yes. But then again, but then he, Garrett woke up. He just walked up and walked off. See, that's weird. Yeah. That level was kind of not as good as I was expecting it to be. Anyways, my my, my actual fuck you for the week goes to Zach. Zach. Fuck you, Zach. Fuck you, Zach. I just Nine out of ten. Bullshit. Zach, oh. guys, guys, Zach is apparently six foot four or something like that. He's over six feet tall. You just don't like that we added a staff member that's, again, taller than you. Once again. That guy didn't, I didn't think that guy was that. I, I wouldn't have hired him if I knew he was six feet tall. <laughs> we are, four player is evidently not an equal opportunity this, employer. Fuck you, Zach, for being so, so much taller than me. You can't tell from the pictures. Is he tall or... 
the um, other thing. Or am I short? Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably short. But hey, you know, fuck you, Zach, for being... That was the thing we convinced you, like, early on. Fuck you, Zach, for being gifted in your height. <laughs> <laughs> he was gifted in his height. Vertically gifted. Vertically gifted. Anyways, that's... I think it's six foot four, Reborn. I don't remember. It's six foot something. The point is, the guy's over six feet tall. Whatever. Anyways, um... Seriously, though, I'm not, I don't really mean that, but seriously, fuck you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's going to do it for this this show, guys. Well, Thank I thought you. you had two fucks. All right, everybody in chat, <laughs> type your height. Go. Everybody in chat, type your height. No lying. Go. All right. Thank you guys for watching slash listening. We appreciate it. Show. We are a live show. We broadcast every night over at 4pp.tv. Our podcasts are recorded every Tuesday night. Um, so if you want to catch a live show, if you haven't caught it before, you can catch us then. The, uh, on 4 pptv the, the YouTube version of this podcast, number 356, will be going live, hopefully later this week. Apologies, but we had... My, my camera ate my old memory card, so we lost 355. It enveloped it. Yeah, it did. Uh, and one last thing, we put out a, a bunch of different uh, video reviews this past week. Nick's Lightning Returns video goes live tomorrow. We put out Zach's uh, Metal Gear review. I put out my Titanfall review. We got I mean, an Escape Goat 2 review coming. Nolan's, yeah, Nolan's doing that. Uh, we've got a bunch of content coming up, but this is a really big number, uh, really big month for us. We, we need to get our numbers up because we got E3 we got to start getting ready for. Yes, we do. So if y'all would, we'd appreciate it if you come to the site, check out our articles, comment, share, whatever you can do. Watch us live on the, about, on the live page. Until the end of March, make 4playernetwork.com your homepage so easy and or, the home page of every single computer at your local school yes and library, Just go into the library. at your local school change library. the home page that's cheating anyway i think it's fair in all seriousness though if you want i would just say watch us live on 4pp.tv that helps us a lot too um and uh like i mentioned before stick around we're gonna be playing the demo for caffeine after the show so that should be fun look for that on youtube in the next couple days if you missed the live recording so um fourplayernetwork.com and uh, we'll see you next week. Later. Later.